You're listening to the Gamecaster. 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 Welcome back, you sick freaks. You've waited long <laughs> enough. Your ears can finally experience the auditory sensation usually reserved for Pornhub. But since we're right in the middle of No Nut November, you all haven't been on there. So this is for you. Jeff, give him a delightful groan. Oh. <laughs> That was that was that delightful. Was delightful. Now, that do you was, know what no nut November delightful. is? Explain it to us. Yeah, what's no nut November? It's you don't ejaculate. <laughs> I was really hoping she would be like, you can't have cashews. You don't. You don't nut. <laughs> you can't have you cashews. Just, do not eat any nut peanuts. No pistachios. Cashews, pistachios. <laughs> nothing. No, it's right to ejaculate. Did you even know? Is that right? About, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. no nut November. No nut November. I've heard of it. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> no one really because knows. it makes it makes nut December incredible. <laughs> And flooded. Nut December. That's yeah. not a thing. It's an eggnog Always season. nut December. Always no nut December. No nut November, then always nut December. <laughs> you always, always are nutting. Nut. You're constantly nutting. Just, oh, nut. Oh, well, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's, <laughs> that's, true. that's where the song comes from. Genius. <laughs> that's not where it comes from. But that's The holiday season is upon us, which for me means inexplicable sickness and the abject terror of being flattened under the crushing weight of debt in the name of gift giving. Oh my uh, God, and to right. that end, the Gamecaster Secret Santa is in full swing. We had yeah. 25 ish people sign up this year and i'm really happy we're doing it if you want to get involved in this too late fuckers it's over join the discord to get involved next year uh this is the kind of thing that happens over there though as well as our gamer of the week that's back on its third week straight we started up again with michiana board gamery shelly and then learned all about mr measles and now it's on to mick dave mick uh, it's really fun getting to know these people in more depth by asking them questions that make them feel the need to seek psychiatric help afterwards, such as how many times do you poop? And if you were a bird and could poop on someone's head, who would it be? And why would it be me? Two, Swoozle's now classic A to Z questions, which he does with every person, those. which is very cool. <laughs> to lots of great fun other things I can't remember right now because my memory is uh, like a wheel of cheese. It's just there's being eaten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how does Swoozle, uh, do you feel like at this point he's like, I, I got to do the A to Z thing every time. Yeah. I fucking expects it. But now I got to fucking think of 26. No. What's 26 times 2? 50 something? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it 52? That is correct. I got to think of 52 fucking words. Yeah. You know, that. That aren't repeat. That, yeah. That aren't repeats that are word. still kind of like funny to go together. The fact yeah. That Swoozle is more creative, funnier, wittier than I am in a second fucking language. Yeah. I know. Bothers me know. to my core. Whenever I read those, I was like, I bet he's like Ryan and just came up with this like in two seconds. Like, A, yeah, this, fingers B, do this. His fingers do the work. His Ryan, I need yeah. you to come up with everything you say, That's but I need I you imagine. to do it in German. Fum, fum, that, fum, 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 just, as, just as witty, but in a different language. I can, all I can say is 555,555. Yeah. Well, you did learn, um, Filipino for a hot second, didn't you? I No, I asked Zergio... <laughs> To yeah. write down, he just wrote stuff for wrote me. Your and intro, I read it. yeah, he and wrote. You, right. That's right. Uh, you like, no, no, actually, you know what I did? I Google. I think I Google translated. Perfect. Oh. And then I sent it to Sergio. I was like, "Is this what I'm actually saying?" And he was like, and he was like "No, you're really. saying what you're saying is give me your dick." <laughs> yeah, you're saying give me your He's dick. Like, yeah, that's what you're saying. As Nerdfest quickly approaches, the excitement and nervousness are building in me quicker than when Natalie bends over with yoga pants on. We've got <laughs> lots of events, a charity auction, a 50-50 raffle. We'll be doing giveaways, a tumble and dice tournament, mini painting classes, meet and greet with local designers, and of course, nonstop constant gaming all weekend long. It's going to be so much fun. And if it's not, lie to me and tell me you had fun because I'm just a simple human being with feelings you jerk. Natalie is making lots of merch, including t-shirts and game bags adorned with the NF logo. Jeff will have Gamecaster pins and stickers and maybe trophies, and it's just going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see everyone there January 13th, 14th, and 15th. Did I mention it's mandatory? It's mandatory. You have to be there. Yes, if you're listening you're to this obligated. now, I'm sorry. You have we'll to go. See you there. But lucky for you, it's free. Yep. So you guys, I started a new hobby. Oh, God. You Mas- to, you know masturbating. What? Oh. In No Not November, you started? I did. I started Ooh. in No Not November. Well, I'm not ejaculating. I'm just masturbating. Oh. <laughs> just doing it I'm just getting point. the motion down. Yeah. yeah. It's practice. Yeah, it's like 13 pumps a time. Well, ejaculation that's really like, disappointing. Like, that's like the win. You're like practicing it to a point of now, okay, this is where I would do it. Now let me stop. Exactly. Practice. That's that the hardest like torture. part. It's, pra- it's it's practicing for you, Natalie. This is helping oh, it's a last. the bedroom. I've been trying to talk Natalie into playing two players, <laughs> but so far it's only been oh. a solo thing for me. Yeah. But I'm really good I'm at good it. At it. Oh. I'm getting really good at it. I win almost immediately after I start, but it's gotten harder and longer each time. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so I'm finally, I don't want to use the word finally. I've been getting into role playing 
games. Oh, oh you're role glad playing. you ended with games. That was interesting interesting yeah, I had to add games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have never really played D&D. I didn't grow up playing RPGs as nobody I knew or hung around with played them. And while I was going through high school, video games and sex were socially acceptable, which I did a lot of. But you role playing. Of, you had a lot of sex in high school? I had so much fucking sex in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Good for but you. Role well, playing was yeah. considered peak I don't think nerd. Many people had sex with me in high school. No I would, really do, I would have fucked the shit Thank out you. of you in high Thank school. You. you were. Wait, Natalie, really? Would you have had sex with me in high school? I guess I don't know if that's a weird thing. That that was, was, okay, now if we're looking at the pause for me, that was a horrible pause. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> this part is like, how am I supposed to say yes? You always that? just say yes. Just say yes. Yes, of course. It's an, it's you a, would definitely it's a fuck the shit question out of question that no one has the actual answer to. Jeff, you just was say yes. the, Jeff was the spirit king. Did you know that, right? Were you, were you spirit, yeah. spirit king? It's like Which prom is king. basically like prom king for but before but prom high Like for home? Like, yeah, okay, like homecoming oh, king. Okay, yeah. Like homecoming. Yeah. Gotcha. Like if homecoming queen is like the. The big thing for, you know, that girls win, and that means they're, like, super popular. Yeah. Jeff was that for a boy. Yeah. So, yes, you would have fucked him. Okay? <laughs> okay. Just Man, say you'll just, fuck him. Just, I just want you to yeah, know, Jesus. in high school, I was very shy. Well. You, okay, fine. You know. Jeff would have fucked you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You, you just got it. Right. Okay, just, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would anyway, have been like, this Jeff anyway, guy. Role like- playing in high school was considered, like, peak nerd. Very virgin So, I think a lot of people stayed away due to the fear of ridicule if it got out you know instead of putting their penises and vaginas they were putting their swords and dragons which is when uh why when i'm out natalie i don't yell avast ye fire drake and prepare your one lubricated scale to be penetrated by my perfectly normal size for my race according to multiple google searches short sword you called your vagina a scale in that comparison <laughs> lubricated just one <laughs> lubricated scale. you're a dragon with one scale one maybe two oh or just God. one just one scale one yeah i guess there's two maybe Depends. Everyone's got a different front. Well, here I am now in my fours, and our dear friend, the OG game caster, Jeremy Pete himself, is designing an RPG called Grit. I played it a few weeks ago with Ben of the Date Night Thrice podcast, Mr. Measles, and current gamer of the week, Mick Dave Mick, and I had an absolute blast. I played as an elf named Gimli, who was very sensitive about its name, and it was absolutely, it was like so much, it was so much fun. I immediately wanted to play something like that with my kids after I played. So, after a bunch of research, I landed on a system called Tiny Dungeon. I created a world, wrote a story, and we've played three sessions now, and I'm just fucking loving it. It really gives me the outlet to be creative, as I'm a colossal nerd at heart, and love writing stories and thinking of fun ideas for the kids. The hardest part, of course, is not writing pornographically. (laughs) Uh, It just flows through me so effortlessly. In the first two scenarios I played with them, I've incorporated board games. The first scenario, they were at a festival where they had to like take on this world champion in this dice game called Bash. And if they won, they'd get valuable information on the stolen crown they were trying to find. Bash, of course, was just a game of strike. Okay. um, Which was really cool. (laughs) It was so funny. He, like, pulls out strike and calls it Bash. And Scarlett looks at me like, this is a strike, right? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay, cool. (laughs) She's just like, I don't uh, don't get this part. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, he made a game for this scenario? Then in the next scenario, they needed to get through this door that had a magical puzzle lock on it and couldn't be opened by force or any other conventional method. And so to solve that puzzle, they had to solve a Yubongo puzzle. And so it's cool watching them figure stuff out and get into the story. Um, and I really, really am enjoying it. So keep an eye out eventually for a Gaming with the Kids Half episode where I'll interview them about their experiences with Tiny Dungeon. And if you're looking to start role playing with kids, this system, Tiny Dungeon, has been very simple and quick to dive into. And I'm just really, I'm loving cool. it, man. I can't stop. That's great. Playing it. Yeah, it's very fun. I yeah. never got into any of that. I, I want to say that I made a D&D character with from Joe? scratch once. Okay. I don't know if I was in high school or like just just out of high school trying to like have sex with Natalie. Like I don't know what area that was. <laughs> right. Um, she's very. She's but very I true. yeah. It was. I, I made it and we. It took a couple. Like it took an hour. Right. It takes a, a decent amount of time to like make a character. Took an hour to write. Figured to take so an hour to read. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember starting and Joe's whole friend group has played D and D for, years, for right? years. And then it ended up being like three hours of them like arguing over like teeny tiny things. And I was like, this is not fun. This is not a good mm-hmm. time. But I think I would get back into it with like a right group. And but yeah, they were just kind of maybe overly experienced for I was like, can we just like do something? Like, yeah. Something yeah. Happen. Oh. Right. Joe has to remember this play. and We'll talk about it. But it's like, wh- why are we just yelling about this? <laughs> yeah. Let's just do like do something like fight <laughs> right. something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is why I got more into that like lore, uh, the the Legends of Drist and that, that yes. like, D&D campaign but game. But board game. But board game yeah. version of it. Uh, this is like working. A lot more structured. This is working out for me because I'm also like not super into this stuff. And I, re- Ryan and I were talking about it the other day. And I think a lot of it's because like those like like fantasy world stuff is just not my thing. And that's why like 
I yeah. don't get into like Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. It's just not. I don't blame. I you just all. don't get into it. And so like when <clears throat> some things come up, I feel like kind of stupid because he'll like he'll be like, "There's this like gl- hieroglyph on this thing. What would you do?" And I'm like, "I don't even know You're what like, somebody w- like, who came across that would do. Like, I don't watch any of that about stuff." This story. Yeah, because right. if you don't get into the story and you don't pretend like. And then some people even go to the extent of like, not not what's best. What is my what would my character do? Yeah. My yeah. character is right. a bard. We're I'm trying sing to do a song. that too. Like, yep. like, what would your yeah. not just this is what's best for the game? Yeah, you're right. role playing as yeah, the, you're yeah. like actually but getting into the thing. You have to thing. get into it. But I really like this because it's for kids, and so for me, it makes me feel like. And I know what I'm doing. Are. Yeah. And, and so, exactly. uh, so like, well, partially it works because I kind of like get the gist of what Ryan, where Ryan's like leading us or what we should do. And so I'll like guide them to that sure. if they're not getting it. But I also like don't feel dumb because like you're not. Yeah. I'm, I'm like on their level almost <laughs> as hey. far as like experience playing this. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we're all noobs just experience wise. But it's the, the funny thing is Scarlet has kind of turned out to be the most imaginative Ooh, one yeah well, we were shocked not that not her, that she's um, not imaginative or the other two you know well, she's aren't, the youngest the first world has yet to ruin her imagination and childhood That's <laughs> well i'm yeah. just surprised i guess so i'm telling a story right and they're li- they're like experiencing the story as the characters and then they're gonna like do things and the stuff that she's coming up with to do is, is the is, straightforward stuff is like really surprising to me how she's just kind of like, okay, for here, I'll give you one for instance. So um, they arrived in this scene, okay? And in this scene, there's two wolves sleeping outside of a tent. And inside the tent, they hear snoring, okay? So Scarlet's turn, she's like, I'm going to sneak. I'm going to try to sneak up to the tent and peer inside and see what I see. And I'm like, okay, that's yeah, cool. That's perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. So she did it. So she, she was success, succeeded. She had to like roll some dice. Yep. And she got in there. And I'm like, okay, you, you go in the tent and you find this giant orc. And he's asleep. But, you know, it's a monster, yeah. basically. And so she's just like, fuck. Right. She was like, hey, <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah, fuck. Holy shit. But so then it's <laughs> Cameron's turn. This. And he's like, I'm going to go kill, I'm going to go kill the, the wolves. And she was, so he was about to do that. And Scarlet's like, Cameron, wait. Well, she's talking to him as if he's a character. Yeah, yeah. Sir, Sir Dennis. Dennis. Hold yeah, on. Okay, that's funny. And she's like, wait, you're gonna if you go the, over there, yeah. yeah, she's like, you're going to wake up the wolves, and then that's going to wake up this monster in here, and he's going to fuck me up. He's going to fucking Ryan, kill me. Yeah, gonna fucking kill Ryan me. Ryan fucking monster. Wait, Cam, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Cameron? Yeah. And then this Ryan starts getting tears in his eyes like, oh my God, I'm so I was like, she's doing it, but that, so that. Okay, so that was I'm raising nerds. I'm raising them. They're my nerds. So later, so they end up waking, They end up. that ends up happening where... So Cameron, he was like, okay, I won't do that. But then later on, one wolf was sleeping on what looked like a treasure chest. And he's like, I'm going to try to gingerly pull the chest out from under the wolf. Uh, And I'm like, well, that's going to be a hard roll. And he failed. And so the wolf came out and everything woke up. So then Lexi comes by, gets like, how did she do? She was like behind one of the wolves. And she was like, oh my she God. has this long spear and Max laying on the floor. Max, her dog. And she, she gets, I'm like, what do you want to do, Lexi? And she's like, I'm behind the wolf. She's like, I'm gonna get behind the wolf with my steer, my spear, and I'm gonna shove my spear up its butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and so then she yeah. goes, she goes behind Mac laying on the floor and pretends like this. That, yeah, yeah, like just, here we go. Doing, That's ah! great. And so she rolls and succeeds. And so I make, I'm like, okay, what do you do? She's like, all right. I'm like, that kills him. Tell me how yeah. what happened. She's like, I shove it up his butthole and I fling him over the trees. <laughs> God, what a way to go. And we're just That's all great. dying laughing, and it's just so funny. <laughs> Not just, I'm going to stab him in the back. I'm yeah. going to stick She's this like, in his butt. I'm going to this spear up his butt. But enough where then I can fling him oh up and over the trees. <laughs> That's great. Scarlett, now you need to draw a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's the magic of role play. That's it's awesome. been so it's funny. It's been so fun and great. I just can't wait till the next. And it's cool for me because I get to be creative, like creating the world they're in. Yeah. And then it's great watching their imaginations twisted as fuck like their dad, you know, yeah. <laughs> coming yeah. up with this crazy shit that they're well, doing. So Apple cool. doesn't fall far. I know, it's <laughs> yeah. Really? It's so cool too because one, I think it's like really good. There's a lot of positive things in having them play this, you know, like it gets their creativity going they kind of like i don't know they kind of learn to like comprehend you know story focus like yeah. all that kind of stuff and, and critically surprisingly think. yeah critically thinking problem solving like all this stuff but like butthole shoving but surprisingly <laughs> i mean I wolf need be. <laughs> whenever we've played this we've played it like three times now yeah. and it's been like Probably the shortest time was like an hour and a half, longest maybe like three hours. Yeah. That's a long time. All three of them sit here 
involved in Engaged. the game. Nobody's like after an hour, like I'm done with this. Can I stop yeah, or complaining? Yeah. You know, so right. I was like, okay, they're all into it. We're doing this as a family together, spending hours together doing this activity. Like, I don't know, like what's better than that? Yeah. And only like 45 minutes of it is me and Natalie breaking to make out in front of them. <laughs> right. Of course. So in most of most of it's gameplay. Yeah. yeah, like we make out in front of them. Let me well, role play what happens. Here. You walk upon two people and they're doing this. Let me show you. What do you uh, do? Uh, uh. Your fronts are exposed. Right. Oh if we like kiss each other, they're like, oh, Dad and Natalie are kissing. Let's shove our spear up their butthole. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with you guys, Jeff? What are you been up to, man? Well, we're on Thanksgiving break. Today's like the first day of our break. Tomorrow's Phew. Thanksgiving. Woo. We're recording late. Blah, blah, blah. But we're watching some TV. Okay. okay some new stuff. What we're watching. All right. So the first thing that I watched and finished by myself was this thing called Inside Man, which reminds me of Arrested Development. It is a movie. It reminds me of Arrested Development, um, Tobias's book. Oh. The Man Inside Me. The Man me. Inside Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that just reminds me of that for some reason. Oh. Is it a serious Man. show? Serious. Yes. It's not like. It's not like Arrested Development. But it's not overly like dark and that kind of serious. Uh, so it's... <laughs> the man I don't even necessarily you. know how to explain this, but Stanley Tucci's in it. Ooh, Ooh I like and him. And Stanley Tucci <laughs> is very <laughs> good in this one. He is... He's a awesome. star I think of he's a really show. good actor. So he's he is there. in jail, and he is like on death row because he murdered his wife. And he... As is tradition. Used to be a defense lawyer, and some people, while he's on death row, have asked for his help on like... What happened to my missing husband? How did this person die? And he's sort of like assisting randomly. So people would come in and I don't know like I don't know why or how this ended up happening, but that's kind of what he would do. So he's like the inside okay. man, whatever. And then there is also this other story that's happening at the same time where this guy finds himself, I don't want to do too much but finds himself in a messed up situation. He does something not great. And then these two stories kind of like merge together as the there's only four episodes. Mm-hmm. So far or four done. episodes. Four okay, episodes okay. Done. Oh, so okay. I don't know if they're going to be a second season. They left it open where there could be. How many or how long is each episode? They're close to an hour. They're like f- it's between four, four five minutes episodes. And an hour. That sucks. Yeah. But it also doesn't. It's, I don't it's want really it okay. To be any longer. Okay, really? Um, wow. If okay. it would have to be longer, because it, I would almost want more like Stanley Tucci movie or like his his part of the the story. Right. Oh, okay. So these these two stories sort of merge together. The show is is definitely worth watching, but also. Some of the craziest things happen in this show where it's just borderline unbelievable. Like, the way that these people in this show respond to things, I'm like, why? Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> like, something happens and you're like, no, that would be the 10th thing on the list of right. stuff that you do when that happens to you. And it's like... So is it maddening so it them? Realistic? Some, yeah, sometimes I'm like, that's just so unrealistic that this person would end up in this situation. Yeah. Got it. Versus, I think of uh, the show The Flight Attendant. Yeah, Yeah. how she's just kind of like over her head, like things are happening sort of around her and Mm -hmm. she's reacting sometimes strangely or she'll run into something or try to follow someone. Right. Or have sex Um, with me. Oh, yeah. Right. Of course. And (laughs) in high school. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And high school. But this this is almost like these people are making. (laughs) We had the love sack. That was was after high school. (laughs) And Um, college and my 20s. I had so much sex. I did. I had so (laughs) much (laughs) fucking sex. What about in your fours? How's that going? That's great so far. Yeah. It's only been a few months. I mean, it's November, so you know how that goes. Yeah, of course. But other than that. Um... But sometimes these, these people are doing things. I'm like, what? Why Why would you choose to do that? I'm like, there's ways out of this that doesn't end up like... Like, these people are making consistently bad choices over and over yeah. again. And then then perfect timing things happen in, on occasion. And it's kind of like... Like, oh, okay, of course. This isn't going to... You're not going to watch this and be like, this is reality, mm-hmm. right? But it's entertaining, I think, enough to watch. Well, I really like Stanley Tucci. Me yeah, too. he's he's really I'd watch good in the show. Yeah, I've seen The Devil Wears him. Prada three and times. Then- <laughs> And it's the a Hunger great Games. movie. Yeah, the Hunger yeah. Games. Okay. And then the other one that we're watching that's very good. I don't know if you started yet, but the Peripheral on Amazon. Yo, I did. I watched the first episode. Okay. Yeah, we watched the. First I was episode. hooked from the first episode. I really liked it. We're five episodes in. I think the sixth one just came out. I heard last it gets week like something really good after um, like the second episode. It's that's good. what I've heard. I really like it. It's it's kind of in this. It's a sci-fi show, but not space sci-fi. It's mm-hmm. like futuristic sci-fi. Yeah, and it's very cool. Yeah, this this um. What's her name? Chloe. Uh, Chloe Grace oh, Moretz. Ryan, knows. Ryan likes her. She likes Ryan her. likes her. Uh, a lot. You like her. Okay. Yes. Um, she got very mad because she became like a meme on uh, Family Guy. Oh, she did. Yeah, there was like this character on Family Guy that had like no torso, 
And then she wore this outfit that looked like oh, that. That's funny. Uh, but Remember anyway. her on 30 Rock? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As like, Jackson yeah, Nevis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. like that's right. <laughs> and she was Hit Girl. Yeah. She was Hit from, Girl. Uh, that's, where I, that's where I think from I first saw her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 So the, the premise of the show is she, and you already know this, she kind of uh, goes into this alternate reality, which it's essentially a video game. But the question in the first episode is a video game. Yeah. Are, she, how real yeah, is How real is this? And it's a pretty cool premise, and I'm really enjoying it where the show is going yeah i should i gotta keep watching um, that i watched the first episode i wasn't like yeah i wasn't like oh i gotta watch more but i was more like she's hot let's oh go again God. let's go again and let's then somebody in the it. discord was like like give it two episodes and i think you'll be hooked then and i was like okay cool so yeah, i'm, I'm excited it. to go back yeah i kind of liked it i gotta talk about the secret santa thing okay i got my secret santa so, so they sent me it's a the, this app or this website which is great it's very cool to set this thing up yeah, this right. Elfster, Elfster yep. is perfect way. So if you're looking to set up a Secret Santa like at work, yeah, use, like Elfster. That, use Elfster. People can make their own <clears throat> a wish list and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Great. So Very I sweet. got like, all right, here's the person's name. It's it's Natalie. It's not, but sure. I got Natalie. Yeah. And then two seconds later, people are texting the Discord like, I got my present. I'm like, what the fuck is this? this <laughs> you is have like until... Secret turkey Thanksgiving garbage. You, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, that happens a lot. days left to buy gifts. <laughs> you do. Yeah, yeah so don't let that right stop you. If you're, if I'm giving you gifts, you're not getting it for a while. <laughs> so just sit on your edge of your couch waiting because you're not getting it. Until Eddie, Eddie said December. a similar. I saw Eddie um, at uh, Upkeep. His story owns, yeah. and he was like, he was like, "Do you have to like send your gifts?" I'm like, "No, you have till Christmas." I know everyone's. You like, can do it now. Everyone's just make like, sure cool. they get it. And by it's Christmas. cool. Everybody's on it. It's kind of neat seeing everybody it's get fun. their gifts. Oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah, I got mine bit. too, and I'm, oh, I'm so super. I haven't excited. gotten mine yet, but I sent mine. Right. Actually, my person got. Him. Yeah, don't feel like you have to, but but I didn't want to. I didn't want to make the thing too close to Christmas with everyone else's Christmas shopping. Yeah, you know, this was it almost kind of like a, almost kind of yeah, like do a precursor. What's, what's convenient for you or when you can. Yeah, it's like before the Christmas it. gets into full swing and you have to like yeah. worry about everything else. I figured this was a good time. Yeah. To do it. Plus, this is sort of the time when the BGG uh, one does it. Yeah, you know. Um, what's up? You got something? Girl? I just wanted to talk about a movie that I watched. I think you and Devin should watch it. Okay, I'm trying to get Ryan to watch it. I'll bet he's already watched it. It's called Don't Worry, Darling. No, don't I'll worry. bet. No, I'll bet you. It's have. on HBO. It's on HBO. Um, he's, he's seen it for sure. <laughs> I watched it the other day. Sam Sam watched it, and is it a murdery mystery kind of thing? It is a thriller. I movie. love thrillers, oh, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just like that. Okay. It no, it's, 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 at first I didn't know how I felt about it because I did, I went into it knowing nothing about what it was about, and so I'm just watching it, and then I got hooked because it's like you know something mysterious like it seems like one thing's happening but oh i like you know, florence Pugh. yeah florence Pugh is great she and she's really she's pretty like yes yeah yes. harry styles is in it is she hot <laughs> <laughs> um and olivia wilde and okay whatever so basically like it seems like they're set it's like set in the 50s and you know I like that like the wife stays home mm. cook, cooks cleans Ooh. whatever and then like the, the, the husband whatever? goes Talk to more work about the whatever. but the husband it's like they're all in this community with just each other and the husbands go to work every day but you don't really know like what they're doing and then it starts getting like suspicious like some Ooh, mystery yeah like some one of the people is kind of like we're not supposed she's to be widow. here she's black widow's sister oh she's super yeah he never saw that i, I told oh, him some things she was in he didn't know but okay. she's she's pretty um but anyways yeah so basically you're kind of just like what's really going on here something seems not right and i'm not gonna like give anything away but well i hope not i after <laughs> but the here's movie what let me tell you what's not but after the movie was over for like two days straight i just like couldn't get it out of my head where I, can i watch this uh hbo i have that oh yeah uh jeff okay. that show you talked about the man inside me yeah where do you watch that that's me. uh netflix okay yeah that's a netflix okay. one peripherals what's on it actually called on. Inside, inside man, man. inside man yeah, be okay. inside like the movie. denzel movie <laughs> yes oh okay inside man is a denzel movie yeah we're denzel oh, plays see, denzel. Oh, see. we're denzel plays denzel that's a denzel <laughs> denzel movie it's a denzel joint yeah you know, so he you, plays the same person a lot like he plays the same character he does he i like denzel me too he's awesome he's a really he's good great. actor but no that's a good point yeah he does kind of do that yeah. do you, uh, is that it is that all you got that's what i got yep i think we're just gonna end it there we fuck uh, games. Have a good fuck games. Fuck everything oh, else. Kind of oh my gosh! Wouldn't it be so funny if there was like one time we just all we just didn't stopped? play any new games? So we're just yes. like, and that's it. I think <laughs> that's what we should have done for the hundred. I do too. Oh that would have been so funny. <laughs> See you later. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> so something random. Devin has. I, so I'm not gonna. I don't know anybody's name. Devin has a student. His name is something. Okay. Um, the student has a mom and dad. Probably. Dad is a board gamer. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's a bitch. So Dad's, Dad's a, a board gamer, bitch. apparently. Devin kind of found out Sweet. about it. Okay, that's cool. And was talking to him about like me and the Instagram account and then us. And then he started listening to the show and he was like, Oh we no, we just a called him a bitch. 
And then Ryan just called him a Fuck. bitch. Shit. So if he's listening. Well, we hope, oh, he doesn't know. We didn't use his name. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. Bitch, this he bitch has no guys. fucking clue we're talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Um, but he was like, let's do a game. And I'm like, we need to get him maybe to come to NerdFest. Yeah, so totally. Yes, was like, absolutely. Devin, send him the information for NerdFest. So Devin's if you're out there, I don't know your name. Student's so dad. Free for come to NerdFest. It's, it's not Mrs. Madigan's fault. I don't know her name. She told me I, Mr. Madigan just forgot. So if you're out there. <laughs> We care did about Did he you enjoy the games. podcast? Did, did yeah, he, say? he says he really likes it and wanted to like hang out and like play games. That's, That's awesome. fucking sweet. So, or he's not going to never going to listen again. We're just trying to be nice Shit. to him. Yeah. So either way, we'll know. Either way, it's cool. We'll know because maybe next time he listens to this, he'll tell Devin about it and then we'll know. That's true. That's he listens for more than one episode. He comes up to Devin yeah, and he's just like, our I'm the bitch coming up. Or that we're talking he listened about. to episode one and loves you and Jeremy and he's going to fucking <laughs> he has hate no the clue. <laughs> I always worry when there, there's yeah. random people that are like, I'm starting, I started the podcast for episode one. I just found you guys. Oh my God, yeah. you're great. And I'm like, uh oh. Uh-oh. Good that's luck, what, good that's luck. when it wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not that I don't think they're good. I like the me and Jeremy. No, it's like, but it's like nothing like way better than what it is now. Oh my gosh! So, uh, um, do you? Is that it? You guys got anything yeah, yeah, else? Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. Jeff, you been playing any games? Man? <laughs> I've been playing some games. I want to start just quick. I'm not going to talk. <laughs> started. I'm not going to talk about this game a ton, but it's a game my students have been liking. Um, that was sent to me by this company publisher called Project Genius. It's called mm. Headspin. Yeah. Okay. Headspin. So my students have been playing it, and it's it's very much like a. You ever played like Match Madness? No. No. Um, March Madness. Or March, of course. Oh, yep. that's yep. bad. Or you play, play the Ubongo stuff, right? Where it's heads of up. Here's a picture, right? And then you have to, first one to do it wins. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, except this one comes with a, almost like one of those cool lock dials. There's like, um, f- there's like six different colors and you kind of spin the dial to have a correct orientation. Um, okay. But each card you flip over has like sort of a puzzle you have to solve to know what the color order needs to be. So it's not just like flip it over and then it has to be like red, yellow, blue, green, right? You flip well, it over. There's a fidget spinner? And then it gives you, it's kind of like, a, it's, okay. it, I think that's kind of how they. That's what it calls it, yeah. yeah. Quick So fingers. it flips it over and then it has like some puzzle of how to, you, so you have to solve the puzzle on the card and then put it on your, Ooh, I like that. on your oh, cool. dial. It's kind of cool. It's a heads up game. It's just two players. Um, but my kids are liking it. I wanted to, to kind of throw it out there. It's a smaller publisher, so mm-hmm. it's there, a cool game. I looked it up on uh, Board Game Geek. Yeah. Project Genius, designer, mm-hmm. N.A., artist, N.A. Ooh. Uh, pictures, zero. zero. No image oh, available. Oh, pictures, really? Oh, comments, okay. zero. zero. <laughs> Ratings, two. There's no picture? Yeah. There's no well, picture. How do you know, you know what it looks like, then? Well, I don't. I have the game. I have no, no idea. No, I mean, like, <laughs> you said it's like a fidget. A fidget. How did you know? Okay, so here's the overview. Headspin is a lively new family game. Quick fingers, mm. fingers and minds race to crack the color code and dial it in on their fidget spinner. The first to get their spinner on the landing pad with the right color combo wins the round and yeah. ain't no little bitch anymore. Yep. It's cool. That sounds And fun. then you could buy like multiple copies if you want to play with four or six people. You get more fidget spinners. It's not like a fidget spinner, the one you actually like. Yeah. <laughs> but think of like, it reminded me of an escape room lock where there's almost like, it's like bigger and you have to like, yep. whatever. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll put in a little combo. But that was uh, something um, mm. unique, a little different that my students are, are kind of liking. So if you're into trying to get random teenagers to play games, that's all I'm trying to do. Random okay. teenagers? <laughs> Not the ones you know. How do I bring random party? teenagers over About my house? The next game. I haven't been playing a lot of games. I don't know if it's just the time of the year. It is. School yeah. year. It's time of the year. So on Monday, so this is actually good we didn't record on Sunday because I wouldn't. Right, you had nothing to talk game. about. <laughs> but we played, this is a big boy. This is a big game. Oh. This game is called big. My Father's Work. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've heard of it. My yeah. Father's Work is a huge production from Renegade. Yep. Huge production in terms of like big ass box, they had a Kickstarter, the components are like fucking overly produced, right? To the extent of like, one of the things you get is like a teeny tiny jar with a cork in it, and that's like one resource. Yeah. So you might be telling this story, but oh. I have a, a Gen Con memory of this game. Yeah, Dave bought it. Yeah. So I, he, if he listens to this, which I'm sure he will, because he listens to every episode diligently, because he's a good, li- he's a good little listener. He's definitely not. Two episodes <laughs> um, fine. I could be. I might be wrong on this retelling of this story, so he can tell me if I'm okay. saying this wrong. I don't know if how much research he did on this game before. I think he was aware of it, but I remember we walked into the the hall, and I was like, "What do you want to do first? And he's like, "Well, I just talked to this guy. I'm at the My Father's Work booth, 
He's like, they're about to like release it for sale in like a second, and he's like, I think I'm in line for it. And I was <laughs> I like, oh. And he's like, like I, I think he was kind of like hemming high, like I, I don't know, because I, I think it? it's like it was like, a lot of money. Oh, it was like two hundred bucks or bucks. yeah, it was yeah. like a, wow. a lot okay. of money. And so I think he was kind of like, I don't know, should I do it or whatever? And I was kind of like, well, you're kind of like right here. Okay, so that happened. He yeah. bought it, so he did buy it. Right. That story may or may not be. It's something like that. Yeah. It's something would happen. Um. And so then I was talking to ah, was it Eddie? It might have been Eddie. Um, God, I'm fucking this story up, aren't I? So I think it was Eddie. I was talking to him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, my father's work. You know, I really tried to get it. I wanted to get a check out." And I was like, "I was like, oh yeah, I told him the story. I'm like, my buddy just kind of like happened to be there, and he was like, what the fuck?' <laughs> He's like, "I was trying to get that goddamn game. I couldn't find it anyway. I couldn't do it." I do and, think Dave had it on his list to like get. Yeah, so he might have actually known about it beforehand, yeah. but I'm pretty sure when he was there, he was kind of like hemming. I guess like, I'm right I don't here. Know. He was like, yeah. kind of like, yeah, I think he was just kind of like, I think sure. I'm, I think they're gonna like sell it to me in like a second. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just really funny that Eddie was like, what? Oh, come <laughs> on. Yeah, like, yeah. God damn it. Sorry, so, continue. That's right. So this is Renegade. It's by a guy named T.C. Petty, which in my head, I'm just Tom thinking, Petty? Tom Petty. Oh. Tom Clarence um, only Petty. Only games that, He's Tom Deddy that now, I jumped think. out to oh, me on his... Me? Sorry. <laughs> God dang it. I didn't, I didn't mean to be oh, disrespectful. Oh. Shit. R.I.P. Oh, cut that out. Yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. Oh, uh, so TC Petty, the only game that I that jumped out at me on his resume, Viva Java. Oh, which we played, and then GI like Joe the deck Java. building game. And you've played that? I played that. He, I think he also did one of the other deck building, like Transformers or something for Renegade, which is like the same system, uh, right? Yeah, same same kind of system. But Viva Java was a cool game. I like that game a lot. But this will probably be his. This will be his his magnum opus. Yeah, his opus. His magnum his Carlson magnum openings <laughs> for a Ooh. while. Uh, so this his this dragon review, scale. I almost am giving this not necessarily a full review of like my thoughts because it probably needs another play for sure. Yeah. Oh. But I'm also going to do this spoiler free because there are some scenarios in here. I'm going to go right. into kind of the gameplay, but not necessarily what the story is because you don't want I don't I don't want to spoil oh, some of so the, the stuff story that matters. Comes yeah, it okay. can matter if you yeah. give a shit about the story. It can matter. A lot of people um, do, and mm-hmm. a lot of people do. So I don't want to spoil it. So don't fast forward. Yeah, you heard me. Right. Um, in my father's work, uh, players are competing mad scientists trying to complete their father's work. <laughs> Is that um, right? Yeah. I so I guess guess like that. their dad dies Kinda and like leaves them like... Okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about... Is that what happens in Casper? Well, I mean... I just thought someone dies in the house and then they like... I haunt. thought he was just and a ghost they, always like well, Slimer. Well, Casper's dad was like an inventor and then like Casper was like trying to like... I don't know if Casper actually did anything, but... Oh, they I were, believe you. They were trying to like... So yes, is, yeah, this is called my Casper's his, work. His, uh, <laughs> my father's Casper. His invention Casper. To, to bring him back to life. Oh, Casper? He comes back to life, doesn't he? And then he gets to make out with, uh, what's her face? Christina Ricci. Christina Ricci. Christina Ricci. Yep. Oh, that movie's so good. Oh, man. Oh, that movie's he becomes, so good. He becomes oh, Devin Sawa. He becomes, he, oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. That's not what I heard at first. <laughs> <laughs> Devin Sawa was like the heartthrob. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone wanted that guy. Was. I went, That was like the... Like when I was like a middle schooler, everybody. You, like, you went to bang Devin Sawa, but you wouldn't oh, yeah. bang Jeff in high school. We would, we yeah, would go to fuck? sleepover. <laughs> you bang Devin I Sawa in middle high school. school yeah. Oh, oh you, your sex drive peaked oh, in middle geez, school. <laughs> be. Well, once I got to high school, I went upstairs. <laughs> Devin Sawa. There was this one movie called Now and Then, which was like oh, one of the best movies of my childhood. And Devin Sawa was in a towel, naked, oh, and he bends man. down, and we would always pause and <laughs> see his butt crack. You can see his penis, and then double click your mouse. I don't know if you can actually see it. See it, but we tried to see. You try to see his ween. Well, I, hey, I did the same thing with squiggle porn. It would like, like squiggle, yeah. and you'd pause it, and you'd be like, that's, that's a fucking nipple right there. <laughs> I know it. Fat, 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 Look fat, at fat, the nip. Fat, fat, squiggle fat. porn? But not, no, not in November, though. Scramble Not in November. I wouldn't do it yeah, in November. You know, November. You know what scramble porn is? It was before... So it's back when... It went on a channel, and it had yeah, like... It was, it was like a, a channel. Noise, fuzzy. It was like a porn channel when on cable, right? You There was like... If you like go up high enough, there'd be porn. Jeff out his I'm sorry. But you'd have to... But you had to pay for it. Yeah. yeah, but like a if you didn't channel. pay for it, it was still you, you could still like, like kind of like, see it. It was weird. It was like a <laughs> lava lamp of yeah. images flowing. But you could like hear the moment. Oh, oh, the yeah. audio was audio there. Was free. Same fucking shit. It was, well, audio. It was audio slash. Ksh- yeah, right. Like, there was yeah. like so, great. so it's but, like uh, it, but so it was, it's like, okay, trying it's like to lure you form like a fucking lava lamp. So every once you know it's like that episode of The Office where the fucking thing's gonna go right in the corner. Yeah, every once in a while you get like you get like a see a glimmer or you could see yeah yeah you're like oh man someone's nutting in November. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. He yeah, did and then it. you'd pause it, fat, 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 and then just go to bed. <gasps> oh wow! I could. Well, I didn't ever pause it. I didn't have the capability of pausing. Oh yeah. So I, well, I would. My yeah, like TV a had a VH, had a VHR, oh, so you were recording a VCR it. in it. 
<laughs> so you were recording how many different combinations of things was that? <laughs> so you were a always VD, recording VDR? Your yeah. tapes of scramble. Porn. Oh, I had scramble porn tapes. Wow, yeah, Good recorded well, the scramble porn. Yeah, sometimes I would. Here's what I would do. I would, I would pause it. I would fat. put in the tape. I put in the blank tape. Okay, or sometimes it'd be a tape of my dad like like shooting his bow, and he didn't need that. So I put it in. <laughs> He'd enjoy this. If he I, turns record, it back. I record. I <laughs> record over uh, it. That's the son of mine. Well, so the scramble porn would play <laughs> yeah. from like it started like midnight. It would go to like eight a.m. or something ridiculous. Yeah. And so what I would do is I'd go to bed and I'd hit record. And then the next day I got eight hours of porn to watch. Kinda. Kinda. Eight hours. Eight, of, eight hours, hours of scramble of, porn. <laughs> eight hours of scramble porn like, equals out like five minutes of actual material. I was material. gonna say like eighteen seconds. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But if you well, paused okay. it, five minute fappable material. Eight, sure. Eight, eighteen second actual. Yeah. yeah. Actual porn. <laughs> It was the best. Well, you learn something new every day. Now you know. You you tried to look at Devin. Now I can just now I can just pick up my phone. And, uh, Devin Sawa. That was Devin Sawa's penis. That was, and so that was not that long. How long ago was that? That was like when we were in high school. That would happen, 20, right? Twenty, 20 years, years ago. ago. Now I can pick up my phone, hit the hit this button here, and just go porn, and it shows me everything I could ever <laughs> want from free. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice technology. Man, it sucks Jesus. to grow up in God, the nineties. <laughs> what a world! What a world! Oh man! Sorry, continue. What's this game again? <laughs> my father's, my father's work. Boner. Okay. okay, my father's not dead. We'll um, I didn't get this game. You can talk about it. You talk about Renegade all you want. They don't send me anything. Oh yeah, they do. Never mind. Don't talk about it. Oh, they sent me GI okay. Joe. Right. Um, <laughs> so my father's work. You're competing mad scientist. So your father dies, and you kind of find this like journal that has a bunch of half done experiments. So yes. you're kind of picking up where he left off, which is right. kind of a cool theme. I like that theme. Uh, you get a yeah. certain amount of workers, and the workers are all different types, so you kind of dictate who you are, and you put, like, um, uh, your standy like, says, oh, boop. you get a mini. But you click your guy, and you have a spouse, you have some henchmen or whatever. You have different types of workers. The board is a storybook board, kind of like the Red Raven games, um, you know, Now and Later or whatever those candies called. Oh, I love Now and Later. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're okay. And on those, came out too hot. On each of those story pages are worker placement spaces. So this is a a Euro game at heart. With you take a worker, you put it there, and that space does something for you. Mm-hmm. Um, most of those spaces, at least to start with, are gathering materials and knowledge to complete your experiment cards. So contract fulfillment slash a little bit of engine building. Okay, so nothing really. Nothing like super revolutionary yeah. in that yeah. sense, right? You put a thing there, you get a get blue cube, and that blue cube is, is chemistry, and then that pre- then you pretend to know chemistry. Um, right. <laughs> so there are beakers. You have your own <laughs> player board, which is kind of cool. So this is where it starts to kind of evolve a little bit. You have your mansion, sort of. There are tiles that you can buy to upgrade your mansion, which give you special powers and abilities and and round points or mid game things, and also just improves your engine. So that's upgrading there throughout this game this is where the game sort of changes into something um unique different special um there are like story points story events that happen throughout this game think of like if you've ever played dead of winter the like crossroads, crossroads i was just gonna say that like the crossroads cards. so there's an app it's it's assisted by the app which has all the text on it there could very easily be like a book like a giant book sort of like um mm-hmm. what's that game i play all the time um that you just Draws bought. of the Lion? No, that you just bought with the... With the book? Yeah. Oh, a Tales of the Arabian Nights. Tales of the Arabian Nights. Oh, it could okay. just have a giant book. Like, oh, when this happened, turns to this page. It could do that, but it sticks it all on the app. So if you are like anti-app-driven games, then you might have you. to use it, but it's not a... It could be in a book, which might make you feel better. I don't know. <laughs> so it could say something like, when someone gets to 30 points, read this point. When someone get moves this track to spot seven, here's another story point. Okay. And um, there are... Also, in each generation of this game, there's three generations, there's three rounds in each generation. There are story points that start things and also give everybody sort of like goals. So this is not spoiling. This is the first thing that you'll read. The first thing that everybody tries to do in this first generation is to gather these heart tokens. Okay? So it tells you in the beginning, if you have a certain amount of heart tokens, you're going to read this story. If you don't, you read this story. Okay. And that story event then changes the rest the entire of the game. game. That's cool. So it tells us now what page in the storybook to turn to in the second generation. And that storybook changes the board. So now the board layout has changed. The spaces on your worker placement spaces are different or adjusted. So then going back and playing again, making a different choice is a viable thing to yes. do? Yes. So in... We there are three boxes that are called the scenarios or whatever they call them. We played the first box, and our play said we unlocked one of eight different 
endings and gameplays in that first box. I had a conversation with the burrito man about <laughs> his two plays. He loves it. He told me his two plays. I told so we have combined now to do three. He has not done the one that I did, and he and I haven't done those two. And they were they seemed very different, even from like round two on where we like flip so you're making a new page. story point how many times in one game i think in the first one there's three because that then gets you to the eight story points i think we kind of figured it out so okay. there are little events that change there was one point where i was in last and i got the, the the tablet all to myself and got to make a decision that then affected the game um so those happen throughout i think in different points but i think that's so cool the turning to the different pages and the overarching like story of that scenario there were three major points, which gets you to the eight, right? If you do all three, if you do first and third, first and second, second and third, that gets you to the so eight. So it's like a less ridiculous Tales of the Arabian Nights. Oh, it's, it's a way less ridiculous. kind of reminds me of a, a video game called Detroit Become Human. Have you heard of that game? No. It's me and your brother, uh, Donkey Kong, played it. Uh, and it's like that, where you'll play alongs with stuff. Yeah. And just depending on what you do, it's going to completely branch off into a different yeah. you know, thing. And then you make another decision and it branches off again. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, there's more than eight. Because it's a video game, right? right? Of course. It's like a million different like yeah. branching off things that you can just go back and, you know. Yeah, and I think within the eight different like ending scenarios or big big story points, there's a lot of littler story points. Yeah. Um, which I think is great. There's um I, I like that it changes the the layout of the board. So like you make a story point, if if you don't you know, if you don't save or you don't have enough science experiments, you literally are flipping to a different page that sets up a completely different round for next for next play that's cool so yeah that seems fun and so so as you do this i I don't want to get too deep into like what what happens and and Mm -hmm. there's some voting that could take place there's there's times where just i would get the tablet or just ryan would get it he would be able to know a little bit of information uh there's stuff that's read out loud Mm -hmm. and so throughout the game you're getting points mostly you're getting points from completing your experiments and there are different types of experiments. There's like this master one. Like I was working on teleportation. That was like the one you knew right away. Like, all right, this is the big one. That'll get you the most points at the end of the game. And you need to complete these other like level one, two, and three type of experiments. Blah, blah, blah. You get points for doing that. At the end of the game, there's a few different points for like your tiles, for different cards. The scenario, I'm sure, will give you a few different points. Be- uh, Bill got some points that he had actually um, gotten in the middle of the game that he that would then like revealed sort of at the end of the game which is kind of cool so on to like thoughts this game is very unique i don't think i've ever played a game like this i kind of thought it would be like destinies there are there are a lot of different points in destinies where you're sort of making decisions like that but this kind of changing board state changing worker placement state it adds in this completely euro feel to the game along with the theme of this science experiment type. It's of cooperative. Yeah, it's not. No. So you're wow. competing, okay. trying to get your own things. But there are some points where you yeah, like might you could you change the want, story. Yeah, like if I don't want to collect those hearts, like the example at the beginning. If, if I don't want to collect those hearts, I'm setting the course for everybody else. Or if I'm like I, I, I were only one heart away. Let me do it so I change then. Which you might not know if that's good or bad. Sure. But, How do you win? So you went by basically doing those experiments. So if you have the oh, okay. kind of the most points through those experiments and through some of the tiles gotcha. on your board, that's how you, you're getting points. It's like yeah. a normal Euro game. If you took away the story, there would essentially be a board there that you put your guy on to get resources to c- fulfill the contracts. Yeah. Whoever can fill the most contracts wins. That's sort of the Euro Without part of the game. Without the theme, that's Yeah, so it it's not... It brings in... So what I'll say about this is if you're looking to play a Euro game with someone who hates Euro games... This is this is this the one is to the do game. It. Mm-hmm. So we've we've talked about that. I think even on a top five list of like yeah yeah and games top five Euro yeah, games. Go, right, people, people, people who hate Euro games, games, right? Yeah. People like D and D bring them into this. If yeah. if someone is like, I like Mansions of Madness. I like um, Destinies. I like these thematic immersive yeah. games. This could be a game that could bring them in to a Euro game because worker placement and resource collecting is that's a that's yeah, a Euro pretty game. Euro um, with this this kind of cool backdrop of like old sciencey are, yeah. are the are the townspeople going to attack you because you're doing these creepy ass shit in your mansion above uh, everything and they might there's this like track there's this track literally called the creepy track <laughs> so as you do more weird things neater. you become creepier and the mob might just get you right so there's like there's so, some some kind of cool theme behind it 
Um, the story changes throughout uh, the game, changes the board state for good or bad. It makes it a unique experience. I had a problem um, in my play. I needed these certain color cubes, and all of a sudden in the third generation, that spot was gone. So I was like, I, there's no way for me to get these cubes. I'm kind of fucked. So I needed to like completely pivot. Mm-hmm. Um, that okay. sucked just in my in my play. Could that happen again? Yes. Should I maybe have paid more attention to the story? Could that have told me? I don't know. Um, anyway, that was something that frustrated me that could happen. Like you could be like, all right, I'm going to be able to go to this next round and it could be gone. Yeah. Um, engine building is pretty fun. There's some cool kind of cool satisfying turns. There's sort of these tracks you move up on. Uh, that give you so instead of having to get three blue cubes, you can get one instead, right? So they're kind mm-hmm. of improvements, and I think that a lot of the game can be what you want it to be if you're going to immerse yourself into the um, the story. Sure. Here are some downsides: the story is can be fucking long. Oh. Um, if you it's always the problem. If you don't yeah. care about the story, then then play with people who don't care about it yeah. and just go yada yada yada. Here's what the board state looks like. <laughs> yeah. Um. But you can get you can get bogged down and like let me read like okay I have to read this or now it gets passed to me and I have to read it the text the the person the British man reading it on there which sounds like Dan Hughes um is, <laughs> it, like they read it and then you are am I paying attention am I not yeah. I'm trying to think of where I need to go to get that stuff so the the story can make the game long we, we it took us three hours to play wow. our first game okay I think if we played the same scenario again we would kind of understand like this is the cadence of the yeah. sure the story um. But that it can it can be discouraging. So if you go into it, know that there is some text. It can be longer, and you don't necessarily you don't have necessarily to read need it. to get yourself invested in it. But if you want to, you can. Mm-hmm. So if it's something you're like, I want to get involved in this, do it. But if you just kind of are like, I'm not paying attention, then just go on your phone. It's not a huge just deal. Go on your I phone. would say if they could somehow do like a shortened version of the text. I would move the game into like the the great category. Like if they could somehow wow. just say, yeah. "I just want I just want to play that game in two hours." Give me because the TLDR. The, yeah. the the worker placement stuff that you're doing is not not super thinky over the top, not a heavy experience. Which is now I'm playing it for three hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you either need to get invested in the in the thing or somehow shorten it. And maybe our next play is shorter. Yeah. Maybe our next thing is okay. Here's you know here's some text about science or here's some text about chemistry thing. Blah, but you're blah, right. Blah. If you have Let like move on. one person who's like, no, I want to hear this, then it's like, oh no. Then you're like, okay, well, yeah. everyone else has got to wait. Yeah, I just, don't. So I also find that man, most board games, just the narratives are just not great. Yeah, yeah and I don't know. I didn't yeah. get like roped into this one like I did the first scenario in Destiny. Where yeah, I was like, this is cool, and maybe because it was more revolutionary. Um, there's some weird noise. What the was that? A dog? Was it a dog? No, the dogs are way upstairs. So I, for me saying some negative stuff, that's me telling you that there is some negative to the story. If you're if you're not going to be involved in the story and you don't like it, that could be a, a big deterrent. That's what I read on Board Game Geek is is the biggest negative to the game. Everything else works really well. Um, the components are fucking awesome. <laughs> They're like those little. There's those little like glass jars with a cork in it. There's these metal gears that yeah. are all shaped differently. Mm. These there's like anime. Even the tokens. boards are shaped the cool. The boards are cool. It's just very they're like dual layered boards. Yeah. And if you get dual layered boards, I would you should. I think you should. <laughs> and so the the production is to the nines. And it's um it's a very good game. Um borderline Well for 150 bucks. Hopefully. Better than hopefully. good, not great, for sure. Sure. Better than good, not great. And I would like to play it again to see where it is with the story and if I care and all that. How kind heavy of stuff. Would you just call it? It's it's not heavy. Like, I don't even know what it's going to be on Board Game Week. I would say it's probably in that three. Like, mm-hmm. it shouldn't like be medium? higher than a three. Let's find weight. out. Um, Middle. My father's Yeah, weight. I'd be interested to know what they what, what the world thinks. 3.17. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, okay. so me at middleweight. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's, for the Euro experience, that's exactly what it is. I'm collecting things. Yeah. I'm making an engine. It's funny. Just the things. name of it, not knowing anything about it, makes it sound heavy. It does, well, and, it's a and the way giant it looks, box. Like my the father's box. work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does sound my like my father's work. It sounds it's like, like you're like, yeah, like you're box. finishing some like series of essays, right. you know, yeah. that your dad. Was I honestly working. like, you know, it's like that and Trismegistus have similar sort of themes, right? Mm. We're kind of doing mm. experiments. Mm-hmm. So I would say maybe don't take my word for it because I played it once. It is good. I'm happy to play it again. I'm excited. I asked Dave today. I'm like, if we play it again, when you pick it next. Are we going to play that same box and just see what happens? Or are we going to pick the new box? Mm. So I'll kind of report back as I play it again because it's going to get played um, 
Yeah, eventually. Often, I think, because we it. all enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but take that for, you know, the story thing. That's yeah. going to be up to, I think. I person. feel like the three of us in board game, board, the board game world, at least, story is just like. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. You know, where a lot of people love that. They eat that, they eat that stuff right. up, mm-hmm. you know. So in keeping with the RPG theme that has rocketed through my body like some hopefully multi-year nerdgasm, a few (laughs) board games have come out recently that have bent the lines between board game and role-playing. Many have tried before and failed, though I guess many have also tried and succeeded. Mansions of Madness, for instance, is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, Well, along came a game with the famed name of Pegashpame Shpame called Space Shame Yame, and for the people out there, not in my brain, that's Spaceship Unity by Pegasus Spiele. (laughs) <laughs> our very own mad board gamer passed the baton off to me for this one to review thank you duder and we promptly got it plizade with the kizzos what is wrong with me i don't know God, a okay. lot I'll okay. ring a bang it. okay in spaceship <laughs> unity but did you say a lot <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> that's fine i understand in spaceship unity players are working together to man a spaceship called unity go figure and things sort of go wrong and need to be addressed real time before the timer runs out and you all lose in a fiery floating death trap. <laughs> the game is reminiscent to Vlada Shavadl's Space Alert, only in uh, this game, everything's about to get awesome because the systems that you're trying to fix on this spaceship are areas of your house. Need to power up the hyperdrive to jettison across the galaxy? Well, that's the vacuum cleaner. Need to decode the pilot's manual? Well, that's flipping to a certain page in a book on your bookshelf. Navigation is your blinds. Communications are sending texts on your cell phone. And all of these have actions to perform quickly. If you're trying to pilot the ship through an asteroid field, maybe you'll have to move your kitchen chairs around uh, and then plant your button one and pretend to steer. All these systems can also go wrong and need fixing. So, for instance, the hyperdrive might need to be cleared out before you can use it. Uh, so then you have to like quickly crumple up a piece of paper into a ball and then turn on the vacuum and suck it up. Only then can you perform the normal action. So the game comes with these station cards, which are like these huge cards that have all the information on them that you need to perform the task. And at the beginning of the round, you go around your house and you place them where they tell you to. So the control panel might be your kitchen sink. And so you'd place the card next to the sink. After the cards get distributed, someone reads aloud the top story card of the deck, which basically tells the players what system needs to be interacted with. As soon as that card is read, a sand timer is flipped, and players only have mere minutes to get through these chapters, so as soon as someone rushes off to the sink, they need to get there, read what to do, do it, like putting something in the sink in water without touching with your hands, then let us know they've done it so we can move on to the next card and task. Some of these tasks are performed by only one person, but sometimes multiple people need to take part. There is an especially fun moment where someone engages the hyperdrive vacuum cleaner and yells out, everybody hold on! And then everyone else has to grab hold of something inside the ship, in air quotes, which is your house, and then they count down from three, usually from like another room out of sight, and uh, when they say <laughs> go, they turn on the vacuum, and everyone is supposed to like spin around and yell, whoa! And that's like us traveling by the speed of light, and it's really, really fun. <laughs> Uh, You win if you complete the chapter before the timer runs to the end, and you lose if you run out of time. But losing is kind of in air quotes as well, because uh, you never actually retry. Even if you lose, you just kind of keep going, because this is one of those games where everything is about the story, because it's trying to be like a role-playing experience kind of thing. So things I liked here. This is such a freaking cool idea. Using the entire house as the game is genius for kids. They have so much fun doing the tasks, which are pretty silly and usually always hilarious. Like one is like, oh no, weapons malfunction. Now you have to quickly swap all the spoons and forks in your serverware tray. To repair the weapons. And so you got, they, they have to like cool. pick up all the spoons, yeah. pick up all the forks, and like <laughs> swap them. You know, and the game has this like flavor tax that tells you what you're actually doing. Yeah. But really, you're manipulating the spoons and the forks, which is really cool. Um, and it's just really funny. The game is 100% about the experience. And you must realize that going in. It's also definitely for kids. You are not bringing this, to ge- this game out for your game group at game night. Though I could see playing it. Ryan, run upstairs and change the uh, <laughs> yeah. knives yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I could see playing it with family at like a holiday party or something, I guess. It's definitely light and silly and zany and quick and pretty chaotic. As you'll be running all around your house messing it up. Um, in the name of fun, of course, but be aware. So things I didn't really like, the game is supposed to be all about the story, but as Jeff kind of just mentioned in my father's work, this is this was the moment for in the game for all of us that we just, we did not give two escaping vagina farts about. Oh my God. Right? Escaping. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> There's yeah. The, yeah. There the I cue. go. It's, it's the cue. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, Where were we just talking I came about out. before <laughs> the <podcast. laughs> um, Yeah, so we didn't care about the story. And there's there's 
I wouldn't say there's like a ton of story, but it felt like it. Yeah. We're just reading and reading and I'm like, man, all this stuff is going over all of our heads. Yeah. And it's just like, it was saying all these words and everyone's like, eyes just like. Yeah. Like they wanted wow. the quantum juniper general to go in. And it's like, oh my God. And then the gazongle beals take away the mm -hmm. general. We're like, what? Okay. And so you can get into it. If you, if you get into the story, it could be really fun. We did not. And so all we cared about was the good stuff, which we equated to was running around the, running around the house and yeah. fucking it up. Um, the game would be crazy and wacky, and then I'd read like story moments, and we would just all the wind would be all out of our sails as they sit there and pretend like they're listening, but really they just want to get on the floor and blow pieces of crumpled paper up across it. <sighs> uh, the game again is also very much for kids. I do not think this is something that I'd want to play with grown ups exclusively. And so while it's not billed as a children's game, like on the box, it doesn't say like like it says ten plus for kids. It's definitely a game for older children. Definitely. Yeah. It will also kind of mess up your house a little bit. So you prepare yourself for that. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you you're going to have to pull out your like, vacuum. Okay. You yeah, pull out your <laughs> vacuum, crumple up paper, move your kitchen chairs around, swap the yeah. knives and forks. Pull out books. And yeah, you're getting a bunch <laughs> of pots and pans and stack them all up yeah. and, you know, yeah, take a bunch of books out. Um, and it's fun, but, you know, be aware of that if this is yeah. something you get. Um, overall, I thought this game was an immense amount of fun. And if you have kids around, like ages between eight and ten, you know, or older, of course. Yeah, but like yeah, eight and ten, old. I'd say is like kind of a younger age. I think eight year olds could play. Like like Scarlett could do it. She's six. I but was she like definitely helping needed with Natalie. Because she help. couldn't, yeah. right? Because Scarlett couldn't go to the card and just read it and know what to do. Exactly. So I was like helping her. But like Lexi and Cameron did it completely yeah. on their own. Yeah. Right. Lexi They're nine, in third Cameron's and fifth ten. Grade. Yeah. Yeah, and they can both read, and so they could figure it out on their own. So the kids like that young can do it. And obviously older than that. It's a, if, if you have that and you're looking for something different uh, and that's great. really cool and fun and experiential, this game yes. is great. I can only assume you talked about me while I walked when I left. Yes, okay. I did. Yes, oh, yes. Sure. Um, so <laughs> thank you. I have a question. Yes, yeah, thank he you did. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, oh, not, not like that. I have a question about the game. Could this may be a weird question. Could this game be played in any home? Like, yeah. you have, like it's not. Yeah. So the, sure. here's what the rules So if are. I have an apartment or I have yeah, so here's oh, trailers, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, it's not yep. like... It uses very basic go household on your roof items. Or be outside, right? There's nothing... Well, even, there's even things where, like, maybe for whatever reason, you don't have a vacuum cleaner. Sure. The rules are like, look, try to do these tasks as best you can. If not, use your do imagination okay. and find a reasonable facsimile. Yeah. Okay. Like you know, or if, like, the game will be blinds. like, you know, if your parents don't want you to be fucking up the sink or the silverware okay, drawer, do something else. Do Got something it. else. They're, right. they're like, always try to, they're like, the game is about the spirit of what we're trying yeah. to tell you to do. So, if you don't actually have a vacuum, have then sit there and go, go, oh, I'm turning the vacuum on yeah. and make right, the vacuum exactly. noises. You know yeah. what I mean? Even um, with us, like, cool. We crump they crumpled up a paper that was too big for the vacuum to roll over, so we just like pretended. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah okay, vacuum. Cool. So I mean, obviously it's more fun if you can actually do what it tells you to do because the stuff that you're doing is is really interesting and cool. Yeah. But yeah, if you don't, if either you don't want to do that or you don't have the stuff, right? Um, that's not, yeah, that's not the point. The point is, you know, to have fun. The point is the story. Complete the a task. Yeah, and yeah. have fun. Yeah. So yeah, uh, to answer your question, yes, you can play this regardless of if you have all the stuff right. required or not. Okay. But which mostly most it's people, very I think, basic do. Yeah. stuff. Right. Do you have a sink? Do you so have far. a? Do you have blinds? Do you know? Do you have a cell right. phone? Do you have a kitchen chair? Right. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Uh, what do you think about this, Natalie? Uh, we have a lot of the same points. I thought it, like you said, it was really fun with the kids. Um, it, th we kind of like compared it when we were like after you taught it with the kids where like it's kind of like a real life among us but with no imposters like yes. we're just running around completing <laughs> so tasks that's a funny way yeah doing tasks i know that's, that's right that's and what then said. you know like yelling out that it was finished and and then like you said there would be like malfunctions and we'd have to fix the malfunction and then and then do the task and um it was just exciting to f see like all the different tasks and stuff we had to do and it was, oh there's so many more we haven't yeah come across yet. there's like a right. giant stack of them and you know we're all like trying to like do it quickly and mm. i don't know it was just it's fun that it wasn't just like sitting around a table you know we were like running all over like the main floor of the house and yelling and and i don't know i thought it was super fun but i totally agree with you i cannot picture doing that with just like adults no like i feel like that would just i don't know it's not the same it, it i feel i agree it's a kid game yeah you know, half the fun is watching kid. them do that stuff. Like, I don't that's care why about going to. It was so the... fun for me. Yeah. It was fun because like doing that with them, like you could tell they were like, "What this is, is fucking this? sweet?" This is great. Yeah, and like they had the urgency and all that stuff. There was one task that like 
I was the only one who could have done it because it required you to have a cell phone and I had to like send a text. Yeah, the kids can't or whatever. Do that so they like, have those, but. yeah, exactly. But um, that's the only thing we came across like that. Um, and then the same thing as you, I agree that we did not care about the story at all. Like every time you'd read it, we were all sitting there almost like, like. Like okay, we're jittery. Being like like, when can we just get back to doing more tasks? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> eventually know? I would like, do what you said. I was like, eh, blah 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 blah, and now yeah, we're eventually fighting. he was just like, uh uh-huh, <laughs> no, we're now that, someone's shooting that. us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I I thought it was really cool, and it's really cool. There's a bunch of different like episodes or whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah, it won't a, all be the same. We get to like progress through. You said it. this is like a TV show. Is that like the, the like, is there like a theme? Yeah. So Are there's like there's like five episodes. I don't honestly, I don't think so. Okay. The Never mind, cut that out. No, no, I no, no. I say the batteries. No, yeah. I, it, it is. It does say episodes, and I thought that too. And maybe, maybe that is the, the case. Maybe it is sort of like a TV show. Um, they just call them episodes, though, and there's five. Okay, so it's definitely like a story you're going through. Yeah. at some point. Uh, um, but no, yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell you about the story anymore. My, I loved it with the kids. I think it was a really fun activity and game to play with them. But I probably wouldn't do it any other time. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the main takeaway from this. I yeah. think if you're looking at this game, because the box doesn't look like a kid's game box either, necessarily. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that it... Yeah, because it's, bo- it's a big box it's game. It's a big it's box game. A, yeah. yeah, you would see this and you'd be like, oh, you get to use your house. Like That sounds cool. And it does. Mm-hmm. But I think if it's you bought this cool for a, your game group, I think you'd be like, oh, uh, this is kind of kitty. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go crumple up a paper ball and blow it on the, on the floor. But the kids, right? that's all they want to do. Yeah, it was like, take some books off the shelf and put them in alphabetical order yeah like again, for a grown-up that's kind of stupid yeah it is uh, i'm not but, doing that yeah, right yeah <laughs> right. like actually take no. the books out of the shelf no i'm not no doing that. and then uh, you that's, yell that's out terrible. these words like swoosh bam whack yeah because you know, it's like read this <laughs> word on every yeah. page of this and that's really fun yeah, yeah. but for for a 10 year old that's like yeah this is great. they're like cracking up and they're like oh my god okay <laughs> yeah right it's it's so cool so it, it might honestly be a good get kind of a game for like an elementary classroom kind of thing, I can well, see only four players. Yeah, but you could you could like modify like it. Team. I think you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, you're right, you, could, right. you could modify it. It seems like cool. it'd be a really cool idea to get kids like you know yeah. doing, using teamwork. Oh, and, the other thing I just remembered about it. I mean, I know we only played the first episode, um, but what one other thing I noticed, and the kids didn't say anything, so maybe I'm the only one, or maybe you're just like catering it to them, you know, because it's more for them. And I'm not trying to be a baby because I'm the grown up here. <laughs> but like, I felt, right, here we go. I kind of felt like, like like the bell was closer to Jeff than it was. <laughs> to him. Some, yeah. And maybe why did Cameron get all the tasks? I get to go to the sink. Camera got <laughs> no, all the sink tasks. No, it wasn't that. It was a lot of times I was just sitting there doing nothing, like because. And, and may, again, maybe it's just because it's the first episode, but like you would have to be like, oh, like you'd go do send somebody to do <laughs> yeah. a task, and yeah. then we all had to sit there until it was done. And then there was also times where like you could do multiple tasks or all the tasks at the same time. Yep. You know, so that was really fun. But when one person had to do it at a time, and it took them like five minutes to do it, and we're stupid and then you send yeah. like someone else, and so we're just <laughs> kind of like me and Scarlett are just like sitting there. Like I bet, mm. I bet that it's got to ramp up. That I'm seems sure like an easy thing to ramp up. I'm sure it will. The, and that's future things. I, that's what I'm expecting. Well, but I just remember feeling like that. Like sometimes at the I'm beginning, like, it was like that to be easy because yeah. only one. There's only one task going on. It's not. You're not. There's no chaos. Mm-hmm. And if you remember later in the the chapters yeah, of that episode, it did ramp up. That. Everyone yeah. was doing stuff. There was even more tasks than there were people. Yeah. To I just do. want to throw it out there because I do remember thinking that during the game yeah at one point but so that's space uh ship unity yeah. very cool game i yeah, like that yeah thank you cool. thank you a lot for that the kids are having a great yeah, time good. with it and mm-hmm. they want, we're gonna play it some more for sure good. yeah yeah what else you got man i got a game called acropolis oh i almost bought this this was another game who's who stood acropolis. in line for this game dave, me you, me and ben did you buy it for dave or yep, something i bought it for was, dave like, get we, were, we were trying to get turing machine didn't we yeah. play a game that sounds like that name you played mm, acro-tiri? what's the game acro-tiri. no what's the game we played at ben and m's house at their house, it, it was not perfect. This. Oh, you're thinking of a, you're, um, Arcadia. Oh, oh Arcade, okay. maybe yeah. it has this, a K. Yeah, I don't know. This is um, <laughs> this is called Acropolis. This, this was a hot game at Gen year. Con. Yeah, oh, this was um, so familiar. this was at the Hachette booth. Yep. Which is for a specific publisher would be the the Jigamic 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 yeah. Jigamic games. Um, they had a cool booth. They had Turing Machine. Turing Machine. They they do a, a critical a f- foundation. Yeah, they do a fair thing that they only let a certain amount of people buy each game or buy a game every day. Right. So like, uh, all right, we're gonna have a hundred people be able to buy Turing Machine every day, which is fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, it sucks if you're like there Thursday and you want to just run and get it, but you have to get in line. So whatever. Yeah. yeah. Deal with it. Uh, it's 
So again, Acropolis, designed by a guy named Jules Massoud. He's, Ooh, a, he's a nobody. Okay. Um, sorry, Sounds Jules. Like and so what this game is, is you are architects in ancient Greece. Uh, giving You have the task of building houses and temples and markets and gardens and barracks in the city of ancient Greece. Uh, it's city stuff. It's exciting. Um, this is all done through tile laying and a little bit of drafting. And what you do on your turn is you choose a tile from the construction site. If there's any cost, you pay it. And then you place that tile in front of you in your city. This is very much, Natalie, like a tile <laughs> placement game. Sounds you remember like um, playing between two something? Yep. Between yeah, two cities, between fun. two castles. Um, this is what this is like. You place a tile, and then you're going to get points for kind of what's around it. Okay. Okay. Um, but my, it's just on your own? It's just on your own. You're, yeah. own. you're doing your own thing. So there's like six different colors. Each color has a different placement requirement slash points that you get. Mm -hmm. And um, the unique thing about the game, so where this is different, right? Because that description is the same as hundreds of other right, games. Right, yeah. Where this becomes slightly different is that you can actually start building upward in your city. Oh, so cool. tiles can be laid on top of each other. The The way that these tiles are is they're almost like three hexes that are in a triangle form Does that make any sense so if you took three hexes and i told you to make a triangle out of them that's what they look like okay Does that make any sense i think so you just put them two here and then one yeah exactly yeah. so three it's like a it's like a triangular <laughs> hex okay and there's one of six different colors that's what on each it. tile looks each like? tile looks oh, like okay. that. So each tile has three different spots um a, one of any six different colors could be so there could be three different colors it could just be two right and um, as you're placing up, you can't just stack them kind of like uh, n number nine where you can't just put over it on top. Like yeah, a you nine out of nine. It. You yeah. can't do this. So, yeah, and you can't um, oh, you can't put, put it directly exactly on top. Yeah, yeah. The three it can only cover like one a portion exactly. of the hex. So it has to do that. Thing. And so that makes it a little unique, which is cool. Um, the, the what's What I also like about it is as you're building up sort of, again, similar to number nine, those the stacks sort of amplify um the the ones on top so at the end of the game you look at your uh your city from top down basically you look at it as a bird's eye view right yeah. looking at so it you might sure whatever you can see scoring. whatever yeah. you can see right so you might but, be covering up stuff that yeah you... but certain colors might score for things that are like like if the if the purple tile purple tile is on the third level yeah that could count as oh. three purple tiles okay or three purple hexes right so you get kind of an amplified bonus if you go up um there is a way of getting money, which will help you draft certain tiles. So really, this is a tile placement game where yellow gets you points if they're on the outside, and blue gets mm. you points if they're in groups, and green is independent, that kind of stuff. But the ability to build it up, kind of that makes, cool. that's the unique part of Turns this out, game. It's, it's sort of bit, the yeah. um, it's the draw to the yeah, game. If it was anything cool. else, if it was just build your city, I would never You're play like, this game again. Right, I played that um, because there's other games that are that would that do that sort of better. That I like the drafting in between two cities. I like the bidding in Quadropolis better. Um, but this building up changes that a little bit, and that's pretty cool. So at the end of the game, you count your points, you get scoring conditions, most wins, all that kind of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the the rules to this, the scoring to this, is nothing new. Yeah. For good or bad. If you like these type of games, get it. It'll just like it'll add to your to love of this game. Um, but placing a tile, getting points for specific things is nothing new. The building up is the cool part. The building up is the part where I'm like, this is this is fun. It makes an extra decision point. Because now I'm, I'm building up, I'm covering up other colors. Again, for better or worse. So I'm like, all right, I'm taking away right. this green point. But now, but I'm now my blue my purple completely point. adds. And... There are, on each tile, there are three colors, um, or could be up to three colors, or six total colors, and um, you need to have stars in districts in order for them to score, similar to a King Domino, right? right? So if you have a whole bunch of, of, Crowns. of reds, and you don't have a star, you're getting nothing. Um, so you need to get those, and if you're um, trying to put tiles on top of other tiles... That's it's cool. It's a it's a fun puzzle to do that. It's always fun playing tile laying games where you can stack. Yeah, it just it's it's something different, right? I mm. think the the fun thing with between two uh, cities and between two castles is you're working with someone. Yeah, and that's what I like about that one. Yeah, that's why I think that's one of the better ones. The thing about Quadropolis is that whole bidding of like bidding. I I, yep. I can only take tiles that are like the fourth one in this row, yep. or the third one in this row. When yep. do I use my two? And now I'm stuck with this and I can't place it here. So that's the the best part about that game. This being able to stack up creates a different puzzle 
that is fun and challenging and doesn't feel as samey as you might think. Same Z. Yeah, right. Feel as same Z as you might think. So I think this is in our better than good, not great category. If you don't have a game like like Quadropolis, like Between Two Cities, like King Domino, um, get go look at this one. Th- this could be your tile placing game. It plays quick. It's like thirty minutes. Oh, wow. wow, which is awesome. Maybe forty five. The weight is one point six nine. It's yeah, Ooh, nice. it's not a six, nice. Nine. It's not a um. It's not a heavy game. You could teach it in five minutes. There's also some in a two player game. So that's how I played it. Is uh, the second person in turn order gets to pick two tiles in a row, and then it goes back. So there's some cool kind of drafting in that. If oh. not just back and forth. I think in more in like a three or four player game, it snakes around. So like, yep. You yeah. would pick. I would pick. Natalie picked twice. Sagrada would, style, right? Yep. And that's yeah. that's again trying to make the game unique, right? And I think Quadropolis is probably still my favorite in this category. If we're comparing tile laying, getting points for specific location categories, but I already also own like three of these types of games. Sure. I'm glad that I didn't get it at do Gen a lot Con to... because I have games like that. Yep. But I'm glad Joe did because it's going to be an an easy game. For us to bring out at the end of game night when we yeah. finish at nine fifteen, like we do all the fucking time, and we're like, we don't have enough time to do anything. Right. That, that's a game to play Staves, in thirty minutes. Uh, but Joe has it too. Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh, oh they both I, got I, it? Sorry, I played it with Joe. Dave also bought Gosh, it because right. oh. I bought it. I think I, I picked yeah. it. I picked that up for one of them. I think it was Dave. And I think Joe. Yeah, Joe must have got the same same day or got next it. day after okay. or something like that. Yeah, you're right. I did say Dave has it. I've only played Joe's copy, and mm. but it's a. I think it's a solid tile placing game that. If you're looking for one in that genre or you just want to expand that, get it. If you are in love with other games and you're like, I like my tile placing games, it might not be an instant buy. Yeah. If that yeah. makes some sense. That is Acropolis from Jules Massad and Jigamic and Hachette games. Okay. Would it be good with two? <laughs> yeah, I liked it with two. Because that sounds like a uh, kind of a winner for mm-hmm. us, possibly. I, I liked it with two a lot. It was very fast, which yeah. I enjoyed. Yeah. There was no, there was no like, all right, I picked, and now I got to wait for you to make up your mind. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It was just back and forth. And they, mm. what they do is they, uh, they have the tiles numbered that say like, here are your two player tiles, and you basically just play until mm. the tiles run out. Right. And there are, which I also like, there are advanced rules for each color. Like instead of yellow scoring like this, it's going to score like this now. And so that kind of could okay. go from a, a an easier thing to maybe a, a different type of puzzle. So. It's and I think probably the I mean, thirty very light thirty dollar thirty five dollar yeah price I kind of like that if it's if it's really really quick you want it to be really light yeah that's yeah true. right and yeah. this 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 would be if if you want to get that tile or lane for itch sure. or scratch that yeah. itch or whatever because between two castles you're not playing with two no exactly like we love that game and but when are we gonna play Quadropolis like you don't have that game. only thing that I worry Quadropolis about is better at four too is like we got Land vs Sea which is a really cool tile lane game for two we never fucking play that. Are yeah. we gonna play? Are we gonna? Will this we one you're playing play separately yeah. instead of. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're not building a shared thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. wonder. You never know. Yeah. I guess you could, you could try it. This this could be an easy nerd fest game where it's like, oh, I'm about to do something. It's right. thirty minutes. Yeah. I already t- the rules are that you already got them. Speaking like of which, that's the kind of game I'll, I'll probably need to play at nerd fest. Um, I want to apologize in advance to everybody who wants to. Not that everyone's clamoring to play a game with, with us, <laughs> but we're gonna be busier than normal. Um. I'm I'm hopefully gonna have Jeff be the the game player <laughs> this year, while Natalie and I kind of like try to run around and, yeah, you're and gonna just busy. take I'll care be, of things. You know, I'll be available so, to play games with people. Some people are like, "Oh man, can we play like I would love to play like on Mars with you?" And I'm I like, know, "I would love like, to play on Mars with you, but I don't think I'm gonna have three and a half hours to just sit there." <laughs> right. You know, yeah, when I have this to kind of it might have to be. So if you're listening and coming. Gross. Uh, then, uh, and you're coming in here. It's, 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 it's triple yeah. N. It's you're no other can't be coming. You gotta wait. Wait until December. You're listening and coming. And coming. God, I hope so. Uh, man, that's, God, I hope it's We've here. reached a new level. <laughs> what if we had like a YouTube video of our podcast with like the scramble or whatever? Scramble Ooh, porn? Yeah. Scramble porn. Scramble podcast. That's scramble. Like, oh, oh. Is that is that a Natalie? Is that a? I is see it. A, it can still be a nipple. You could still be. Because yeah, we'll have to do it naked. We are recording naked. But if you're coming, if you're coming to Nerdfest. I'll try to say that. If you're coming to Nerdfest, yeah, I'll yeah. Try to say you're coming at Nerdfest. Yeah, if you're, you're attending Nerdfest. Nerdfest, if you are, yes, attending Nerdfest <laughs> and would like to play a game with us, that make it be. make it like just one or yeah, or yeah. right. Or I will play Strike with you walking by. And right, play it. A game caster's mm-hmm. essential. And I'm happy to play like Guilds of Merchant Explorer stuff sure. like that. But man, I don't know if yeah, we're just not going to have time for the super long play. Ones. Yeah, we have to see how. And if I'm playing it, it might be like. That might be like I don't, something all I play. Like I might yeah. not want to play like that, and then go. Oh, now I'm going to play another deep long right. game. Right. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's um it's gonna be tough to like, divide our time. Yeah, because there's a lot of people we want to see, and it, yeah, we're gonna have to yeah. play host. And now more there's than, events, right? Yeah, and there's a bunch of events, events and. Yeah. I'm looking. I can't remember. Oh, I know. To I'm I cannot believe how close. I'm excited. It is. I'm also thinking about it. like I want to take Thursday off. Too. You guys, it's less than two I'm months take away. I know it's so soon. I know I cannot wait. I'm yeah. going to do that too. Um, I do have some news that I'll share with you guys off podcast. Ha uh-huh, ha. Sorry, everybody. Okay. Do I know um, it? You know it. Yeah. Uh, so that sounds fun. Acropolis. That's yeah, very very Acropolis. cool. So back in the wee days of 2014, two years before this glorious podcast you've all come to loathe and detest was even created, Jeff and I played a heavy game designed by the designer who really can't help himself, Vital Lacerda, called Vinos. Vinos was the game that started it all for Vital Lacerda, and also for me, as this was the first Lacerda game I played, and I'm assuming Jeff as well. Yes, I've since played the Gallerist, Lisboa, oh, CO2, one. and on Mars. Never forget your first. Well, it was a long and time ago, so it's, it was I don't in know, 2014. How many were even out? Yeah, he yeah it was it? in. Is that the only one out? It might, CO2, was, CO2. I think CO2 was out the first as well. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Kanban isn't older than that? Kanban might have been out as well. Yeah, Kanban might have been out as well. But he wasn't like the guy. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't like right. Not yet. Deal. He was known for super, super heavy. Those three what games were super heavy. What made him the big deal? Uh, honestly, I think when Lisboa hit. So the yeah. Gallerist came out and it was awesome. People were like, wow, the Gallerist. And then Lisboa was like even wowier. <laughs> For everyone, and then it was like, okay, he's now he's now cement. I think Lisboa cemented him as like this is this is one the of the heavy guys. Guy. This is one of the heavy upper echelon guy. designers. Yeah. And then on Mars, blew it out of the water. Yeah. Escape plan kind of seemed to come and go, and no one really. I have it. We haven't played. I, it I think. Yet. I yeah. think honestly, part of it is they didn't. It, escape plan didn't get the uh, Eagle Griffin. It did. It did. Yep. CO two is the only one that doesn't have the Eagle oh, Griffin you're treatment. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's still got a good treatment, but yeah, that one still. And then Weather Machine just came out, which I can't. We we almost played that the other day. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we ended up playing Vinos uh, instead. Uh, so because Ryan was trying to be nice and let me cross something off the shelf. Oh, the shelf of shame. shame. It was on our shelf of shame. Oh, Weather yeah. Machine would have crossed. Over it wasn't for me, but it was for her. Yeah. Yeah. Weather Machine would have done true. that too. <laughs> well, I've been well, wanting to play Vinos yeah, for yeah, like years. Yes. Yeah. And you got to drink wine and. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we did play Vinos, and without giving everything away. I do think I want to say that Vinos is firmly planted at the last dot dot dot. In Vinos, <laughs> players are trying to be the best winos, passing out on park benches, getting locked up for urinating in public, and catcalling every woman they see until the intervention phase when you get to scream at the players and write letters about how their behavior is hurting the family. After the forced sobriety event, there's a lot of lying about being cured before eventual relapse, followed by total disownment. It's really fun. In actuality, <laughs> Vinos is about players trying to build up their wine estates by building wineries, planting vineyards, and producing great wines uh, they will sell to local businesses or ship overseas, and then eventually take part in a wine fair where they will showcase their wine to maximize profit and ultimately victory points. The game only lasts six rounds, and each round, each player gets two actions. So another hell of a toit experience here as you only get 12 actions to, com- to accomplish all of your goals. The actions are carried out on this like three by three grid, which I think is called the quadril. On your turn, you simply move your meeple to a different space on the grid and carry out its action. Kind of worker placement style, um, but not entirely. You have to pay money if you are trying to move to a non-adjacent space or to a space with another player or to a space where the current round marker is. After this, you carry out the action printed on the space, which is either like buy a winery, buy a vineyard, buy a vineyard again, buy a seller, sell locally, sell overseas, buy a farmer or enologist, buy an expert, or prepare for the wine fair. Those are all the actions. So the turn structure is everyone takes two turns, then everyone produces wine based on what wineries and vineyards they have, and then on to the next round. On the third, fifth, and sixth rounds of the game, there's a fair, which is kind of like scoring events, Mm -hmm. where you're going to showcase your wine to try to earn these victory points. There's a lot of rules to go over with this one, as it is a Vitella Serta game, so I'm not going to. Uh, basically, it's a heavy simula- simulation about creating wine and trying to do it more efficiently than the other players to get the most points to win. We played the newer version, uh, which has been very much streamlined from the original game that Jeff and I played. Gone is the bank and loans and debt and all the management of that. Lots of other things have also been streamlined for an easier playtime. A lot of people won't and don't like this, as you don't necessarily play a Vital Lacerda game for the streamlined nature of it. And for those of you who want the original heavy crunch of a game, it's still there. You can still play in this new EGG edition. You can play it either way. You can play in the original 2010 version, or you can play in the updated 2016 uh, version. Natalie and I played the new 2016 rules, uh, and we got through this game, Jeff, in like an hour. 
Yeah. A Vitalicerta heavy because of the new simulation rules, game. because yes. of the new set. Okay. Because of the new exactly. It moved so it's, quickly. Because we weren't even thinking. We, we didn't, didn't, yeah, we didn't have to fucking think. <laughs> <laughs> so what I liked about it, I personally loved the new version over the old version. Not that I remember a ton about the old version now, it's been, it's been like eight years. Uh playing a Lacerda game in under an hour felt kind of like wrong somehow. <laughs> like the universe wasn't going to like that. And so now I need to play like Happy Salmon for five hours to restore the balance. <laughs> but it was awesome to be on the fifth of six rounds and the clock was reading 45 minutes. That was really cool. Uh, as always, Eno Tools artwork and graphic design shine in this as the game is just a feast for the eyes. I'm sorry, for the Odin. Yep. The EGG <laughs> components are a feast for the finger pads and the game felt pretty dang smooth to play. With only 12 turns, it's extremely toit. And even though a lot of the complexity with money has been removed, I still found that the game was excruciating at times. Given the fact that you're like over halfway through and it's one of those games where you've, you've, you've done nothing and you never will. And your life is meaningless. And what the fuck is the point? I feel like this will have a much better chance of reappearing on the table quicker than his other games because sure, it only took an hour to play. And, but time will tell there. Uh, because of things I didn't like. So it's hard to put my finger inside exactly what it was I didn't love about this one. (laughs) I liked it. I think I even really liked it. But maybe removing the excess is what keeps the game from being absolutely great. The cool thing is we can try it, the original rules, next time and see what we think if we want. Uh, There's nothing to really specifically say that I didn't like about it. It's just that age-old nagging feeling that's basically impossible to describe. I just know that I didn't have the pull to immediately go back like I have with every other Lacerda game I've played. So, in order of love for Lacerda, my list goes like this. Jeff was correct. On Mars is first. CO2 is second. Lisboa is third. The Gallerist is like third point one <laughs> for fourth. And I think Vinos is fifth for me. I haven't played Kanban, Escape Plan, or Weather Machine yet. And I overall really enjoyed the game though i do look forward to playing it again and i think if you like vital lacerda games you have to own them all so get this one <laughs> and also vital lacerda games are like the show the tv show the wire if anyone has seen the tv show the wire every single time you ask somebody what their favorite season is it's different order the order is just wildly different some people like jeff hate season two right yeah some people think that's the best season of the entire show. Some people <laughs> yeah. love season one more than anything ever. Some people think season one is the worst, right? It's just like, Everybody that's how Vitello Serta games are, I feel like. Opinion, like, yeah. everybody, like, people, some people are like, Kanban is the greatest game that's ever fucking been made. Other people are like, what? Kanban is the worst one. And it's just like, I think that's a, a mark of a great designer who has games that are like, so wildly yeah. differing. Right. In terms of people's There's favorites, I mean. There's something for everybody yeah. out there. And it kind of also means that they're all, like it just says all the time, they're games. You know what I mean? Like, these are games. These are not, like, flash in the pan, kind of, like, no nonsense. These are, like... Yeah, they're not, like, gimmicky things trying to, like, pull you in. Yeah, they they all have their thematic tie-ins, which are very deep. Yeah. And they have their... They're all... They have that Hallmark system where it's, like, you do... You just got to do one little thing. It's like I do. That one thing has these incredibly strong implications. In this Mm -hmm. game, you do one thing, but you only have 11 more things to do in the entire game now. So, holy shit, I only have to do one thing on my turn, but that's I only get 12 of those one things to do. And that one thing that you just did is nothing. I just, like, my first action of 12 is just buy one little tile and put it on my board. You know, and it's like, I feel like I've gotten nowhere. I only have 11 more turns. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. holy fuck. So, what do you think, Natalie? Well, yeah, I agree. This game went so fast. We played the first two rounds and i was like it's only been 10 minutes right. <laughs> and there's only four there's rounds only four left, rounds left. Like, this is gonna like, ramp what? up time wise right? i mean obviously like towards the end the turns take a little bit longer but not that much um and like you said it was very tight it seemed it was like Boink. it felt hard Boink. to know what to do because every single move counted and you had to be as efficient as you possibly could you know but at the same time it was the first time i ever played it so like i was like i don't know I mean, it also depends where you are on, like, the action board thing. You mm-hmm. know, you can't just go anywhere you want. You have well, to... you can. Well, yeah. But you have to pay sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you have to pay or whatever. But, um, you know, so that, like, affected what you could or couldn't do or would, did or didn't want to do. Um, I thought that it it seemed different to me than all the other... Vitalisera games I played and I think 
Again, I never played the not streamlined version, so maybe that's why, because it seemed so short. The rules didn't even seem that like daunting like the other ones. Um, yeah, there's a lot removed. Or long or changed. difficult or whatever. Um, you know, so like I feel like even though there had very different themes and stuff on Mars, Lisboa, CO2, the Galarus, they all felt like a Vita Lacerda game. Right. And this one felt like Vita Lacerda, very light game mm-hmm. almost. You know, it it's did. not light, but compared to those games, which are like a lot this didn't kill our brain. The original rules will. Yeah. It didn't even, it didn't kill my brain before I even started playing like a lot of the other ones, you know, um, which kind of made me not like it as much, but I also, like you said, did like it too. Cause I felt like we would like play it more. Um, I also thought, I mean, I'd say it was a great game, but I didn't like love it or get like giddy about it or anything like like co2 and on mars like i play those once and i'm like oh my gosh you know but so i didn't get that feeling but i did feel like it was like a great game um yeah and then the game board and the look of it and like the components and everything that was all very like beast tail of to like it was just huge and there's tons of stuff like i ryan read the rules but i set it up on the table for us and I was like, geez, you know, like another thing, another thing, another thing to put out. That's what I felt like. Yeah, put out another thing. Oh, my gosh. Shut up. It's November. You can't do it. She didn't do that in high school. Um, <laughs> Not to you. But, Dang it. but yeah, I mean, oh, this is a game where, like, you know, so we only played weird. it once. So I definitely felt like I would do. There was things that I know that I would do differently next time. Um, and the theme was very. It did. It did come through a lot like you know you're playing either red wine or white wine and and you're producing wine and and like you know doing like selling it you know selling barrels of wine and getting money for it and like all this different stuff shipping it overseas and all these different things you know really you know hit that theme which i love wine so i just generally like the theme which is probably why i really want to play this game oh absolutely i know <laughs> a that game about sure. wine sure um but yeah, I don't know. It's like I like I was like, this is a really good game. I wanna like figure it out, but at the same time I'm like not like super pumped to like it's not like one of those games mm-hmm. where I'm like, I wanna wanna play it again like right now or yeah. tomorrow either. I don't know. It's kinda hard to understand. Maybe we'll play the that version again. Yeah, but knowing that it's only an hour <laughs> and then the heavier version. And it's not that much, I definitely am willing to like, you know, so it. Tr- try it a few more times. Okay. Because it's so easy to get out. Like you know, like you said, the other ones, they're a lot. So you got to like set aside some time for that and be in the right mindset. This one you don't. It's just, you know, plays like a normal game. For sure. So that is Vinos by Vital Lacerda. Kazuka. All right, Jeff, what else you got, man? I got something. I got something. What could it be? I got something. I don't know how to explain this game, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I got a joke. We'll make you, you feel good. At I least. got a joke for you. I might have told this before. Okay. I have in my life, but I don't know if I've told on the show. Why did the zoo... Stop giving tests. Because there was too many cheetahs. <laughs> Damn it. That's good. Got that that is good. Yeah. Okay. This game is called Kazuka. Ka- which in Zuka. Kazuka. This is spelled K-U-Z-O-O. Like zoo. Oh. Ka. See, the Kazuka I know is K-U-Z-U. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I love that, that name. spelling, Kazuka, <laughs> is Swahili for escape. Mm. Right. So that's where the Kazuka comes okay. from. But instead of... ZU, they put it in a zoo, and that's where the theme I learned from. that when I was in that Swahili prison. Of course, yes. <laughs> when yep. I was in Locked Up and Afraid. Yeah. Oh my God. This is published by Pegasus Spiele. Spiele. This is a cooperative game for two to six people made by a guy named Leo Colavini. Wait, it plays up to six? Six. Dang, wow. isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Um, and the only difference is you start with a little bit more cards. But Leo Colavini has a lot of games in the six point something category and BGG. Oh, really? Cartagena is the okay. game that I know I the know most Cartagena. out of that entire list of games. I've never heard of it. I've heard of it. I don't. Natalie, I think if you scrolled through his list of games, I'm not sure that you would know any of them. Probably not. If that's <laughs> the most yeah. popular. There I've might never heard be. Of it. I might be wrong. There might be a random Carcassonne uh, expansion. expansion he he um, dabbled in. Is it Leo Card- Cardellini? Leo Colavini. C C O L O. Leo. Yeah. So right. we can look him up. I'm gonna like, look him up. Leo DiCaprio. So, 
we are we're we're animals in this game. So again, yes. cooperative. We're animals. We're trying to escape the zoo. There's a bunch of different animals in this game. You choose <laughs> one. That animal comes with cool little tiny animal tokens. Hold and on. <laughs> have you seen this guy's picture on yeah, Game Geek? I what? Have. He's, I got, see him. he's got hair like Amadeus Mozart. Is he it's just like fucking he's like huge? In a play. It's like he was in a play. And then he's got like a what's he wearing? Is it like a lion? It's I like a bear like, hat. I think in a, huh? in a play it was like the last seat. Like he <laughs> was like, let me put this picture of me that post play of I played what? Simba. Oh yeah, he's got like a. Oh okay, he's really hat. just a baldy. Okay, he is a very normal looking dude. Yeah. So like yeah, if you look oh, at his yeah, list of is. games, there's not like anything that really jumps out. Cartagena is the only one that I know. Oh, I know Incognito. Incog- Incognito. That's an old I one. Know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know Carolus Magnus. I don't know that one. I've heard of oh. the Bridge of Shangri La. Yeah, you're right. Car- oh, he did Carcassonne: on the Discovery. That's a, okay. that's a standalone. Oh, it is. Okay. So yeah, his name's on some. His name's on a lot of things, but it might not. It's not definitely not a household name. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, an- we're animals. You pick an animal. The animal comes with cool animal tokens as well as a cool special power. Cool. Your goal in seven rounds is to get the fuck out of the zoo. Get out. Okay, you want to escape the zoo. I don't know why they're bad to you. They're mean to you. It's the zoo. The zoo. Whatever. Yeah. Again, I have no idea how to explain this game, and I don't know how it's going to come across <laughs> listening to it in your car or at home, but just fucking deal just with it. Just nod, okay? smile. Just and go if, along yeah. with yeah. it. Close your eyes. Enjoy the sound of my voice. Not if you're driving. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't do that. The board <laughs> is a path. Okay? Okay. It's confusing the so far. The spaces on the path have a number and a color. Like two purple. For example... Two purple. <laughs> I wrote that down. You I did? Not, no. Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, equals. Equals. <laughs> and so numbers and great. Everyone gets a hand of cards, <laughs> and on your card is just a color. So I might have three purples, two blues, a red, and an orange. Those are colors. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They don't have numbers on them. He said numbers. They don't. But they don't have no them. numbers. But there's numbers on the spaces on the, on the board. Like on your two. turn, what you do is you take your little animal token and you place it on a space on the path in front of the last animal token that was there Previously. relatively. Yeah. Okay? Um, <laughs> with sort of the goal, as you place them on a color on the space, with sort of the goal of giving your teammates maybe some information about what is in your hand or maybe what's not. Probably more so what's in your hand. At least that's a strategy that we've tried to figure out. Sure. Um, so, for example, adding my token to a red three in front of Natalie's chameleon piece, come a chameleon piece, come a. <laughs> is may indicate to Ryan and Natalie that I have some red in my hand. Okay. Right. At some point in a round, someone, one of us, one of the players, will say on their turn, instead of placing their token, they'll say, let's stop. We need to evaluate what we have. So now you look at the space on the board that the furthest token is on, and it might say two purple. So now we all reveal our cards, and between all of us, we need to have two purple cards. Okay, that's really easy. It eventually gets to like eleven green um, or nine right. red, and there's different numbers for each. There's a different uh, what's the word I'm looking for. There's only like six reds and seven yellows. And, right, yep. there's a certain number of each color. Yeah, there's a certain number of each. So color. towards the end, it's like almost all of that color is what you need. Yeah, so that's where you hard. then start the next round from. But if you if you get the if you get the number right on, you get kind of a little bonus wild card out of the deck. If you exceed the number that is needed on the board, you uh, can get experience points. You can spend experience points as a team to get more cards next round. You like level up. You like level up, sort of. So you get better, or you get um, not only do you get more cards in hand, you could also get face up cards that everyone's using all the time, or some open information. Again, weirdly explained. I also weirdly explained the game, and I was like, I don't really understand what's going on. But as soon as you kind of get yeah, you figure it we out. We played, so I'll just jump ahead. We played a half a game and then stopped, and we're like, let's just restart. Yeah, we're like, we messed this up. We messed <laughs> yeah. up the cadence of the game and that kind of thing, and also figuring out what to do, which isn't, I don't think, like the game's fault. It wasn't like, wow, this is way too confusing, right? Um, it just wasn't super intuitive right out the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, and absolutely. It became. So each, each animal gets a cool special power, which I told you. I'm going to give you a couple points, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, the two of you because we all played this right before we recorded i my i love the art on this game yeah. i don't know why i don't it think it's like you. it just is how art is cool. it's like different yeah it is it's different. not it's not super like lush in its colors and bright and vibrant no or, it's very yeah like muted it's very yeah, kind of like basic for some reason it's just cool in the colors yeah. but it 
Yeah, it's cool. I liked it too. Yeah. It was surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. I kind of read the rules. I read some reviews on Board Game Geek. It's not getting great. Um, like numbers. Yeah, it's in of. the sixes. It's in the sixes, which is kind of it's early, so which could be anywhere from very bad to to like okay. Usually in the sixes, because mm-hmm. um, everybody kind of just throws a six at games, even the third, mm-hmm. very good. Um, but this was surprisingly good. It was fun. I thought it was actually challenging. We played on the easy side of the board and struggled, or at least didn't quite figure it out right away, which I thought is great. We also played on like the medium difficulty level, so I like that you can ramp up difficulty. There's a different side of the board, which kind of makes it harder to get some of these colors, and um, so that would be. Oh, I'm good at the I'm good at the easy side. Let me flip it over and kind of make the game a little harder. And yeah, I guess my my like main I thought was I would definitely play this game again. And I didn't think that when I read the rules and before we started playing, I was kind of like, okay, I'll probably play it once and that'll be it. But I would play this game again. Yeah. What did you guys? Oh, think? we didn't win. We gotta win. I know we gotta, we gotta win. win. <laughs> gotta fucking win. All right. Yeah. When you showed me the box, I was like, I want to play this game. Yeah. Uh, I was drawn to the box cover. Mm-hmm. It's this like, you know, it kind of reminds me of. It reminds me of one of those cookies that's got like the the like light tan and then the dark chocolate like on it. It's like that's the color scheme. It's like this really. It just like spoke to me immediately. Yeah. What cookies? It's like a. I'm not sure. It's like a <laughs> uh, the Keebler Elf cookie. Oh, okay. Oh, like Keebler stripes. Elf cookies. No, the, oh. it's like a. They're made in the trees. Keep yeah, isn't it like it's like an elf on two sides and there's like a chocolate yeah. thing in the middle? Oh, like the chocolate cream in the middle. Yeah, that's like kind of what the box yeah. cover reminds me of that I color see. scheme. And I was kind of like, I want to play that game, and it like Pavlovianly made me hungry. And so, but then <laughs> oh, when man, you like unfolded the board, I was kind of like, oh, it's a path, and it looked it look it's not a roll and move, but that's what it, I was like, oh, we're just gonna be like. Going on this path, yeah, it looks really easy. I'm like when that you looks like kind it. of. It looks, yeah, it I was like let down. Yeah. I was like let down. Yeah, I was kind of like, oh dang it. And the path is literally just like Jeff said, just some colors and some with numbers on them, right? You know, and then there's the path is broken up with like dark brown, light brown, and that that does matter for gameplay a little bit. But still, I was like, oh dang it. And so then he was explaining the rules, and it wasn't Jeff's fault explaining the rules, but I was like, what? Yeah, I had no idea. I, we were you were like ready to start, and I was like, no, but I'm not going to say that. Out loud, so here we go. And so, like he said, we played a little bit. We went halfway through, and we were kind of like, okay, we fucked this up. <laughs> when we played again, I started to kind of understand the the fun of this game. And overall, I had a I had a really I had a good time. I wanted to rack it again. Yeah. If we were recording the podcast, I would have been like, let's play this until we win. Yeah. And then when we win, let's try it on the hard side. Like that's what I that's and that is the mark of a game that I enjoy. Now that said, I think I I think I can understand why it's getting rated sixes. Uh, this the like this. There's some things about it that I think are. Uh, unpolished the word. I don't even think it's like it's like a design. Not all designs are perfect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. that doesn't mean that that the design is worthless or not fun. Mm-hmm. There's sure. a lot of games that are really fun despite their flaws. And this game feels like that to me. This game feels like a game that, despite the kind of wonky stuff that can happen, like you can kind of mathematically get into situations where you just cannot win. Yeah, you just mm-hmm. got a bad deal. And you're right. yeah, and then right. you're just kind of screwed. And that can that can suck, especially if you've played for like 20 minutes and now it's like, oh, well, we just didn't get the cards. Like, to this come isn't out. gonna so that happen. Blows. Yeah. And then there's you know there's like certain things that can happen where it's like you're kind of like where where do i place this token now yeah. and if i didn't if you don't have this one power that lets you ask questions how would you ever know what the fuck's in anyone's hand i guess if you played long enough you see okay jeff has been putting his token on red the last two turns so i know that he wants red to be played mm-hmm. but usually the rounds don't last three turns for one person in our experience well, we haven't played a ton but yeah. you know so right, it's kind of like that long <laughs> yeah cuz you you get rid of your you get rid of all your cards. In, but every time you stop, like Jeff talked about, all your cards go away, you get new cards. So now all mm. the tokens you put on the board previously, like don't matter. They don't matter. So now you're now you can't you have to start deducing all over again. So like that's kind of like a eh, I don't know if I like that too much. But like <laughs> it doesn't know that bothered me. I see that as a flaw in the game. And I see that as like, yeah, I can understand why this would bother people. Or <laughs> I could see it. But for me, I was just I just want to play it again. Now, I am prone to cooperative games. I love co- cooperative games. I feel are, are incredibly divisive. You either love them or you hate them. 
or you think they're okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I know a lot of people, like like Sam, our friend Sam, Miss French Toast, she does not like cooperative games. And she's given the reason what she's saying in episode 100. She said that she doesn't want to be the one that lets the group yeah. down. Um, so that, that that kind of stuff doesn't really happen in this game that much. But I can understand somebody who's like, if, if you don't like a cooperative game, if you're not really into that, I think you're going to hate this fucking game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you like cooperative games at all, I think there's something in this game. There's some sort of magic in there that despite those flaws I kind of talked about are still like, I want to I want to do it. I think we can yeah. do it. Because it, you know what it does? It creates these moments of, so where, you can, where you're mathematically out of it, there's also moments where you're like, we might have just the right amount of cards here to do this. We <laughs> right. might. Yeah. Let's fucking try it. And then we did. And it's like, oh, that worked out so great. And so those moments are in there too. Yeah. And it's also quick enough. How long does it take to play one one session? 20 minutes? 30 minutes? Yeah, probably yeah, 30, 30 minutes. Maybe 30 minutes to play through one time. And it feels quick. The mm-hmm. turns don't feel like, oh, God, pick a fucking turn. It's really right. just like you're like, <gasps> where yeah. do I go? There, and there, again, there are some turns where you're like, I don't know what to do. I, n- nothing seems right. I don't have – this. Is just, I'm just going to fuck yeah. us up. Right. And that, again, I'm, see, there, these are like flaws where I'm like, okay, I can see how this is kind of annoying. But ma- I just, I'm just going to leave it with this. I just really want to play it some more. Yeah, there's some magical yeah. thing in there that makes me want to play it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I would be very happy to play this again. I think the game is probably good, not great. Yeah, but I, I liked it better than that. Right. For but right now, reason. you want to keep. Yeah. For I, I have a, a strong desire to get through it. Yeah. Um, but again, I am very prone to cooperative games. So right. Natalie, what about you? Uh, same. I love co-op games like this. It's a fun kind of like puzzle to me. This one is, um, and like you said, there's definitely like randomness and different things that can affect. The outcome of the game that's kind of out of your control but i think in general you know it's just kind of like a puzzle to figure yeah, out there's nuance in there yeah and like I, there's a couple things i, I kind of compare i thought it was comparable to paint the roses not in like gameplay but in the way where like we play paint the roses and every single time we played it we kind of figured out you know a new little like nuance and like oh, actually, you could figure out some information if you do this, yeah. you know, or, or you know, if you look at this or... And I felt like, I mean, we only played it kind of like twice, but like I felt like it was a game where like the more you play it, the more you kind of pick up on yes, things and get a little bit better and figure out what you're supposed to do to like put yourself in the best position to win. So it was comparable to Paint the Roses in that way. And then I also felt like it was comparable to codenames duet in the way like you were talking where you were saying that it was like you know there's like flaws and like it's not like sometimes it's out of your control or you know you're just not gonna win so then you like rack it again and just try again and i think of like codenames duet when you and me play like we don't go into that game like if we lose we're like annoyed like oh well this game is like it's because of this game you know like even Though it, I mean, I yeah, guess you can that have one, a bad draw of the words yeah. where you just like can't link shit together at all. Exactly, or you can like link a ton of stuff the next right. time. You know, it's just random like that. But you never, it never like deters you from playing the game mm. because you're still just like trying What's the best with what you time? have yeah. and like hope it works out. And when it doesn't, you're like, oh, let's try again. So maybe it'll work out next time. Yes. And it's got that kind of like feeling, which those are two games that we love and played have played a ton. And so that is just you know only a good thing <laughs> for this game True. in our yeah i enjoyed eyes. it a lot yeah yeah kazooka. kazooka 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 i got one more all right what else i got a teeny tiny little roll and write teeny tiny teeny called splitter Splint- splinter, splinter. <laughs> no, I called it splinter. <laughs> um splitter okay this is from pandasaurus this is a roll and write it comes with four pencils yeah teeny tiny golf teeny pencils tiny, with erasers yeah that's cool which is necessary. It is necessary. You will fuck oh, something that's up. Right. Yeah, you um, will. So, Pandasaurus, roll and write. This is a simple game. <laughs> yeah, but holy... F- okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> simple game. Everyone gets a sheet of paper, just like in most roll and write game, and a pencil with an eraser. And there is a shape on that paper that is symmetrical with a line down the middle of it. I guess I don't know how else to explain... I don't know what the shape is to better describe it, but think of a symmetrical shape with a line down the middle. Yeah, just, it a, just it's like a made up of a bunch of squares. Yeah, a, a bunch, bunch of squares. squares. Like just picture a like a diamond shape made of squares. It's yep. not. I know it's not sure. a diamond. Yeah. But picture a, a diamond shape with a line. Yeah, going right top to bottom, splitting yep. the right. squares Easy. in half, and and it's symmetrical. Yeah. So someone rolls two dice. 
you have to take both of those numbers and you write it on your sheet on either side of the line in the mirrored spot. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. I don't know how. I don't know how to say that non visually. Like right? you put it in like one of you pick one side, you put it in that square, and then the other number has to go on that same exact square, but on the other side of right. the yes. line. That's it. Duh. Those are <laughs> That's the, the game. rules. That is the game. most. It's okay. so. Well, fun. You play until the board is completely full. There is no. Oh, pick one number. There is a. No, there's no special powers. There is. You write every fucking number that's rolled every on that paper. Number. Okay. <laughs> there is a star. On the so there's two different boards you can play on um, sheets of paper. There is yeah. a star that will give you some bonus points at the end of the game. Not even gonna tell you about it, but there's that's <laughs> the entire game okay? that exists. Um, you get points at the end of the game once everybody's thing is full. Okay, you get points at the end of the game for grouping same numbers together with a group of that number. For example, if you have a if you have two twos that are next to each other, you get two points. If you have three twos next to each other, you get zero Eight. points. You need three threes, four fours, five five. So you need six sixes in order to get six points for that grouping. Mm-hmm. You can have, um, you can have three different groups of two, and you would get two fours. No, six you can't. Points. No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> you can try, um, but you could do that. Um, there is also a a B board that's just a little different, and there's no, another way to kind of score. It is a simple, like almost I want to say like generation one roll and write yeah good call uh it's not oh, yeah. it's not bringing in a lot of like like new three concepts. sisters or new <laughs> yeah. concept but i'll tell you right now this is for the foreseeable future until i get sick of this game replacing my end of the night roll and write grab it is going to replace quicks it's going to replace silver and gold it's going to replace rolling america that's you because huge. i i for a while, you were like, Quicks is the only yeah, one I need. Quicks is so <laughs> yeah. easy and simple, but this is the new easy and simple roll and write that I want to be playing um, because it's fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. The game is... <laughs> That's putting it lightly. The game is difficult. It, if you've ever played Sagrada and you play Sagrada and you start Sagrada saying, I can put these dice wherever I want. I am so good. Yeah, everything's going to work out perfectly. Three <laughs> rounds Sagrada, you're like... I can do nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. It has that similar feeling, but you can't have any powers or not. You just, well, I guess I'm writing this here. I guess I'm writing this there. And yeah. um, it is, I, I, I'm really liking it. I, ha- I got six of each of the boards laminated so I could play it oh, on a um, good idea. Uh, dry race. Dry race. Yeah. So I'm happy to like do that. Like I can laminate six for you guys and you can just have the game. Bill took six Yeah, you just need two. two dice, right? Yeah, you just need two dice and... Some pencils. And a, yeah, and, or now a dry erase marker. Right. But for how... Sim- I, I really like this game. Um, this is a very easy... I need $10 to get to my free shipping. Yeah. Oh, add yeah. this, yeah, add this in your cart and I think you'll play it more than you think. Mm-hmm. If you like a game like Quicks or Silver and Gold or Rolling America, just get this game. I think it's good. What did you guys think? Because we played it, played it twice or something, or do we play it? I don't know. But this game, last time. my yeah. God, we play this game. I'm like, oh, cute. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> there you go. And then I roll four one, three one, <laughs> five. Oh my God, yeah, I six know. one, one one. To one. I rolled a one every time. And you need the ones time. to be separate. Yeah, the right. ones gotta like, be separate. Right. Like Jeff one. said, like you need one not touching another one yeah. to get the point for it. Like, all like we roll is I'll freaking just group ones. I all my ones together and I get this, a bunch of points. This feels no. like, like, like Jeff said, like Rolling America or like, like On Tour, yeah. where those games, after, like, after so long, you're like, shit, this is getting stuffy. It's getting stuffy it's in, getting here. in here. And this game feels that way almost at the beginning. The first like move, the very first like one or two moves you make, you're like, got it. And then the third move, you're like, I've I've fucked up. I'm yeah. I'm I will never recover from this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very quickly, you're like, oh no, what's gonna? I have to get okay. This next one has to be a five, or I'm fucked. And it happens over and over yeah. again. And you get to these situations where you're like, oh, this is great. I got oh no, but I have to put the other number on the same spot on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, like, I, so do I ruin yeah. this to and get so this? Or? Yeah. Many times I'm, I put numbers down, like I wrote them down so fast, and then I'm like, I gotta fucking erase that and start <laughs> yeah. over and try somewhere else. This is not gonna work. Yeah. This game was so challenging and so br- it's brutality. It is just merciless, <laughs> absolute brutality. Because like Jeff said, it doesn't get, this game doesn't give a fuck about your stupid feelings. No. It There's just no roll two dice and put them on the yeah, fucking put paper. Them on the board. Put them 
down and you, you there's no power there's nothing you could do about it and you you can cry <laughs> yeah. and you should and i wouldn't blame you you would still be a man in my eyes if you cried mm-hmm. at this game it is so hard i liked it but it's scary so I don't it's know. I, I like I look at it. And I'm like I I don't know if I need to feel bad about myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a really good game. It is a really good game. What do you yeah. think, Kelly? You're right. It definitely brings out a lot of emotions. <laughs> but yeah, you're how right. How many times you're like, stop rolling that? Ryan, what are you stop? doing? Yeah, like, oh, one sorry. table, of yeah. one just <laughs> random dice. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's definitely frustrating at the beginning. You feel like like Jeff said, you feel like. You're gonna nail it. You're gonna get points for everything so you put down. And then at the end, <laughs> oh, you're like, "Fuck that idiots. up. That one's already fucked up. Oh, guys, yep. gotta fuck this up too. Stop rolling fucking ones, Ryan. Yeah. You know." And then we're just like, at the end, it's like, "I got like 15 points. Cool." Yeah, because there's no <laughs> in, in Sagrada. It's not like, "Oh, I didn't get three spaces." <laughs> right. In this one, you're you're never going to get like in Sagrada. You're gonna have a feeling of, "I got my whole board. How yep. cool." Yeah. In this one, you're never going to do. Oh that. no. So there are times well, where you're like, "I'm placing this because I'm gonna." Fuck that up because that's less than when I fuck this whole right. bottom of the board. Yeah, so you're Sagrada, like, you have options. Yeah. You have a host of <laughs> uh, co- compared to this game, you have a host of yes. dice yeah. at your beck and call. Like, ooh, I could pick this yellow one or that green one or that purple one or yeah. that. Ooh, in this one, it's like you have a four and a two. What are you gonna right. fucking or do? You're about like, it? you have like these three fours touching, and you're just saving one spot yep. for like that four, four that more. last never four. Rolls. Yeah, never and again. right over it never. So there is or a the bunch spot of you put it in. We'll just fuck up the fives on the other side, and you're like, I'm ruined. But at the same time, you recognize it as a game where like if it does work out i mean it's not gonna work out like where you get everything but like you know if you do like decently that's gonna feel fucking great yeah you know because it felt so bad when you like did yeah. so bad <laughs> yeah and we're saying this like this is some vital asserter i know but I it's know, like it's, the simplest it's little thing it's ever. almost nothing but it's also <laughs> with us saying this the stress is also low stakes it's over in 10 minutes exactly and then you can rack it and play it again right um the puzzle is just fun and can be really frustrating but is but it's frustrating it's in cool. like a fun <laughs> way the in, weight like, a funny is 4.25 <laughs> <laughs> wait no it's not it's no. literally a one yeah a one. <laughs> it's as low as it gets which is probably what quick it's as is. low as it gets. Yeah, I think it's is an easy buy, honestly. Yeah. If you're if you're looking to just throw a, a game into a free shipping kind of category, or you walk through a game store and it's sitting there, <laughs> yeah, just give it. It's a, a good one. It's a good little a dice shot. game. It's a very yeah. good little splitter. dice splitter. That's called splitter. Splitter. Damn. Pandasaurus. The Gamecasters are hosting a convention. Yes, NerdFest is now open to the public and admission is completely free. Simply head over to eventcreate.com forward slash NerdFest. There you will find all the information you need to get registered and hopefully pumped up for the con. So we would love to have you on January 13th, 14th, and 15th to play games and laugh along with us all weekend long. Once again, the website is eventcreate.com forward slash NerdFest. If you're looking to support the show, maybe consider flushing your money down the Gamecaster's toilet by way of our Patreon page. There are four different tiers which will get you access to behind-the-scenes content, exclusive content, or content ahead of time. You will also get swag that nobody else has access to and just the opportunity to help out and support a podcast which you sometimes listen to. We have amazing patrons. Thank you so much for your support, guys. If you'd like to donate to help us pay for things like hosting fees and that blank that Jeff's had his eye on, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Gamecasters to help out. The Gamecasters Twitch account has relaunched and we're live every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday night streaming board game and video game content and having a blast talking to all of you. If you just simply can't get enough Gamecasters in your day, please consider heading on over to twitch.tv forward slash Gamecasters and give us a follow and maybe a sub. I have the best time streaming for everyone and it's just a super fun place to unwind after a long day and watch someone who is trash at games play games. Come hang out and engage with me in a way you never thought you had to before, but I'm sorry you do twitch.tv forward slash gamecasters possibly the best way to interact with all of us though is via our discord server if you go to the gamecasters instagram page you can check out our link tree in our bio to get access to our server it's a great way to engage with all three of us on a daily basis as well as meet a bunch of like-minded awesome people so check out our discord server Find out what kind of social media gumbo the mad board gamer has concocted. Yes, cock, yes. From all of your responses in today's Instagram inbox. And now it's time for the Instagram inbox with the mad board gamer. We got some 
gumbo for you. Mm. Social media mm. yum, yum, gumbo. Yum, 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 I know this Instagram inbox has rolled over into other social media platforms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't change the name of it, though. No, the name is great. Yeah, you the can't call is... it social media inbox. That sounds <laughs> stupid. Okay, I went with a favorite of ours. Social media mailbox. No, it's dumb. No, it's dumb. I went with a favorite, okay? It's also maybe like one where if I don't have anything else to do and it's been a long time since I've done this one, I then do it again. And yeah, I'm still new. always surprised at the new things, the new names that we get. So oh, this I remember this inbox that. is replace, add, Subtract a letter from the name of a board game to make a new hilarious title to that board game. This is where Terraforming Mark has come from. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Dave Length. One, Dave Length. Some of our <laughs> favorite memories have come from this one. And I think it's been 30 or so episodes since we've done this. Oh, wow. And we're back. 30 episodes? I kind of made that up. I didn't look. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> I think it's somewhere. It, it might Damn. Be, wow. It's been a long time. Yeah, You're think. right. It's been a while. But we're back. Replace, add, subtract. I'm not too, like, strict on the rules of this. Kind of make yeah. us laugh. Just make it funny. Right, that's it. Yeah. All right. Over on Instagram, we'll start with the Instagram and the Instagram inbox. A fat guy eating burrito, Dan the burrito oh, man. Oh, it's going to be good. He gave a little, like, short kind of sentence right up. Get ready to hate winter in this new world I'm right. Sleet the dice game. <laughs> Sleet. <laughs> Say rude things with a fun accent in crass Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dan again. Mick Dave Mick says rope player. <laughs> just do some rope. Just make some knots and yeah. stuff. CP Wilson, we might have had this one before, but I like this one anyway. Rod Rising. Rod <laughs> Rising. As well as Spot Tit. <laughs> what? Those are spot Spot it. Spot it. I see it. One of those I see it. Flip it over. There it is. Go. There's the tit. Spot it. Found it. And then just a good one yeah. uh, Sushi Ho. <laughs> <laughs> just a straight up ho. Yeah, Sushi Ho. You my Sushi Ho, girl. Yeah. Beeble Deeble says Honey Wait, is that the one? No, Beeble Deeble is the Instagram. Yeah, that's. Who is that? Why do I know that name? Beeple Beeple. Beeple Beeple Deeple? Is it Beeple Deeple? Beeple Deeple. Yeah, I know that. Okay, whatever. Go on. It says Honey Butts. (laughs) (laughs) Mansions of Sadness. Honey Butts. Mansions of Sadness. (laughs) Dune Rise of Dick expansion. (laughs) (laughs) Sam from the McMeeples account, he said instead of just adding one letter, he's just going to add a whole bunch of words to the end of this game. Oh, this is good. Okay. This is the Guild of Merchant Explorers who form a group of Master Explorers. (laughs) <laughs> it's basically yeah. just the game just that we random, talk yeah, about right. all the time. So I have, what else do I got here? Oh, yeah. Um, Wonderland's Bar. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one. This is from Saves the J. Okay. That was Wonderland's Bar. Mansions of Radness. <laughs> That's, good That's good. Sheer Boredom says Witty Culture. <laughs> witty Culture. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really funny. Better Half Reviews, The Rad Cathedral. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. This is cool. yeah. Red. It's because he's red. Fucking yeah. red. Also said, Red's ready, team. set, bat. <laughs> it's like a baseball game. <laughs> ready, set, <Yeah>. <laughs> bat. <laughs> and then came up with another Wonderland's War one that's just Wonderland's Warm. Oh, Nice and cozy. It's no warm, warm Wonderland. That's what, that sounds like, like Wonderland to me. Nice. Yeah. Sean Risling says, dick settlers instead of dice settlers. Of course. <laughs> of course. He says, it's a board game about taking control and managing the D. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Where's your dick settling in her? <laughs> oh my god. Insider. My dick is her. The board welder says the guild of merchant exploders. <laughs> exploders. <laughs> it got dark real quick. Yeah. Uh Dan says um another one. Be a mad scientist and help your dad, social friend, which is my father's dork. <laughs> <laughs> Help your dad's socially awkward friend. My father's yeah. dork. Or it could be like my father's twerk. I thought about that. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um those were my Instagram ones. Let's roll over into the Discord, which is hopping. Dork. Mick yeah. Dave Mick over on the Discord said, Swellings of Eldervish. <laughs> <laughs> we have. I love the penis related ones. Yeah. Of course you Plurpy do. over on the Discord. Instead of Super Fight, we have Super Tight. Nice. That's tight. <laughs> tight. 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 We have Merchants of Penis. <laughs> <laughs> which is just P N U S, Penis. Which, okay, penis. I have a random Wait, story. Is Plurpy? Yeah, yeah, Plurpy. Merchants, uh, Merchants of, of Penis. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> So there's this guy that um, God, that's I good. used to I used to like bowl with. He's like older dude. He went to Central Michigan or Western Michigan University. And if you've ever been to university, if you've ever been to a, a school, you get an email address. Okay, mm-hmm. so like mine was like Madigan Seven. You get like something that's your name. A lot of people have like you know yours might be like R James yeah. at at Central Michigan. Blah, 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 sure. So his name is yeah. his name is Phil Nussel. 
And his at Central Michigan was P Nuss at Central Michigan dot <laughs> no. Yeah, it was P N U S. Phil Nussel. P Nuss at <laughs> What's your email? P P N U S. Oh my god. That's um, so P-Nuss. we have this one. This game turns into um, Sleeping Todds. <laughs> like sleeping Todds. That's Just good. like a whole bunch of Todds taking a nap. <laughs> sleeping Turing Machine Todds. turns into Luring Machine. Luring Machine. Like, hey, come oh, on yeah. over. Right. Let's have the sex. Garage. Give me the Just sex. Garage. Garage. <laughs> a game called Garage. Here's one. Okay, this is all plurpy. Uh, <coughs> These are genius. Yeah. Shower grid. <laughs> 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 this one, you're also good. This is a good one. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Fields of Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Why are the ones with random dudes' names? I know. So the so name. Terraforming Mark. Terraforming Mark. Fields of Carl. <laughs> Shave that shit, Carl. Come on, Carl. <laughs> Um, Keith Loner. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you. That's a great one. For you. Um, Raiders of the North Spa. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and this one for all those um, just people who are missed. The Forgotten Waiters. Oh. Just, they don't get any. <laughs> Instead of Forgotten Waters, Natalie. I know. Get oh. it? <laughs> all right. Here's Chris in Haymarket on the Discord. <sighs> Gave me a bunch as well. Beyond the pun. Okay, be beyond the yes. sun. Yep. The Gurgle Bros. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> Chronicles Wait, did, of Grime. Did, <laughs> <laughs> escape Flan. It's like Escape Flan. Escape like, Flan. Oh, no, 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 get away coming. from the Flan. Yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, I, I was going to say, I think I probably told this joke before. Did I uh, tell this joke, Natalie? Uh, what did Cinderella say when she got to the ball? Oh, yeah. We heard this one. Did I? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you continue. Remember that? <laughs> I remember. Where was I? It's escape Flan. <laughs> yeah, escape Flan. <laughs> Food Stain Magnate. <laughs> Food stain. <laughs> like you're like a rich dude. Yeah. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the venerable food stain yeah. magnet. <laughs> this is um the cheap alternative of, of a game that we love. Uh the Grand Austria Motel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Motel version. Motel. So Isle years. of Scats. Ooh. Ooh scats. Gross. What about that's the poo. Kinks dilemma? Oh, I like, like that. Ooh, Ooh, the kinks yeah, dilemma. which kink do I choose Ooh, tonight? It's a dilemma. And how about this? this is I'll put epic, it in the butt. This is an epic card game. Magic the Lathering. <laughs> 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 Micro Macro Grime City. Gr- uh, Grime. And then the, the expansion Man, is the dirty full city. louse. Full louse. Which is gross. <laughs> um, instead of moon rakers, we just have moon rapers. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> are they fucking the moon or are they on the moon raping? I think they are residents of the moon raping. Okay, they're not ra- They're not like like moon, fucking like the moon the against rock. the moon's take will. This, take this moon, take this. <laughs> uh, my clitty. I feel like we've had. <laughs> <laughs> my clitty, my clitty. Instead of shower grid, we turn this into power grind. Power. Oh, so we got a power grid. We so we had, had shower grid and power grind. Yeah, all from, <laughs> yeah. All from that one. Um, peeping gods. Oh. <laughs> Get out of you're here. so good at spying on women yeah, when they're taking their clothes off. God, you're a peeping he's god. A, he's, a god. He's, a god. <laughs> he's a peeping god. <laughs> there's peeping Tom and there's peeping Some gods. Some classic ones. Too many boners, of course. Yep, Underwater titties, of nice. course. A war of whimpers. <laughs> <laughs> um, tits and ragers instead of wits and wagers. <laughs> <laughs> tits and ragers. Tits and ragers. Yep. It's like boobs and boners. Now. That sounds yep. way more fun than wits and um, wagers. Ever smell Ooh, instead it? of Everdell. Does it really? Okay. Um, Belfart, New <laughs> Queen. That. We have all oh these nice, nice good ones fart there. New queen. Eric Farmer over on the Discord. <laughs> Lords of Waterpeed. <laughs> <laughs> the Furby of Dracula. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, he posted that. Yeah. <laughs> he posted the, the picture of that. And then one of uh, this one's just kind of goofy. Um, oh my goofs. <laughs> oh, my goofs. <laughs> oh, my. oh, I fucked up. Oh, Dang. Oh, 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 look at oh, those. Goofs. Goofs. My go- these are great. All right, here's Swoozle. Are you ready for Swoozle's list? Oh, my. Yes. God. Is it A to Z? Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's hefty. It's a lot. All right, here we go. <laughs> How's he do this? This could fall into our funny category, Ryan. Savannah Mark. <laughs> <laughs> My father's pork. Oh. Brash Wankenshire. My father's <laughs> pork. <laughs> what are you Is eating? Just the, what do you got there? It's my father's pork. Oh. <laughs> Which could be dirty or could also just be like, he's you're, you're like, eating food. Yeah, just, food. Did, my, who smoked that? It's my father's <laughs> pork. Have you tried my father's pork? <laughs> like he's pork. very good at smoking pork. Is that Uncle Jimmy's pork? No, no, it's my father's pork. Oh, yeah, my father's. okay. You're you at like a pork eating you contest. With it's your, your uncle, It's like a family reunion. It's my father's pork. Okay, it's my uncle. Yeah, it's your uncle, but it's my father's. Bitch stone. <laughs> Adrian's Mall. 
We got tumbling dick. <laughs> we have rice fork. <coughs> Llama oh. gland. Oh. Rory story pubes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fuck out a pube and just say what happens. It's like Rorschach Ooh. test. What does it look like? <laughs> oh man, where am I? Um, Fuck story me. Pubes. Fuck me, oh, yeah. Swoozle. Sushi Ho, another one. Fuck me, Swoozle. We got <laughs> wow. Wombat Commander. Oh, that was funny. Three Fisters. <laughs> oh, fuck. We got yeah. Junk Fart and Gunk Art. <laughs> in the same Gun- thing. It's another Rorschach test. Yeah. Yep. Gunk Art. Yep. Just like uh, jack off f- on the wall. And fist what Martians, it like, baby. Fist Martians, adventured red planet. What, wait, fist, what is it? Meant? Fist Martians. Fist <laughs> Martians. <laughs> don't, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, the cocks in the forest. Oh my the cocks god. In the forest. The, and the silver continent. spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hobo rally. <laughs> oh no. Just, ah, they're just getting all together. Yeah, they're all you're getting just, together. Or you're just moving hobos around the board. Like, oh, my hobos gonna move that way. <laughs> Hobo rally. <laughs> Poon Lake. We had I think on the last one. This is a, a this is a sequel to an old game. Instead of can't stop, we just have. Can stop. Can. You can. can. You, you can. can. Hey, do you do it. know that? Yeah. You can. This war of minge. <laughs> it's war of this minge. war of mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, great. God, how yeah, does he do like this? this is, I don't understand. He's like some I robot. It's a second that, language. Yeah. yeah. All right. That time you filled me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Nailed that one. <laughs> yeah, you got that one. That was a good one. Literally in that one. You nailed it. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that time you filled me. The time you filled me is God damn it! That's ones. great. We need a, where's the bell? Get the bell. Get the fucking bell. Ding. Yeah, we gotta ding it, and that's the winner. Well, we, there's more. Oh my. Uh oh. I want to get the yeah. bell. Whatever. The time you oh. filled me is now the current. Oh my winner. god! Yeah, that's clams winner. of Caledonia. That's funny. Rash <laughs> octopus. Instead okay. of cuphead, just cum head. <laughs> Scat in the box. Oh god. We have Ta over on the Discord. Reef oh. turns into Queef. Nice. Obviously, the loop is the poop. Obviously. <laughs> yep. Wonderland's war turns into Wonderland's whore. <laughs> New York Zoo, classic New York poo. New York poo. Yeah. New York poo. Jonathan Kalinsky over on the Facebook page. What a dog. Came in with, took many bones. I was young and needed money, he said. <laughs> oh, he took many Frosh of them. Haven. Okay. What? Like freshmen. There's oh, always one on the campus okay. bar. The yeah, fuck. yeah, sure. Um, instead of hiss, just piss. Piss. <laughs> piss from my ass. Yep. Um, this is he's like he changed one, but Minge Span, Minge Span, <laughs> is good. Um, the Isle of Cants, you just can't get off of there. <laughs> Cants, yeah. That sounds like fatherly advice to go take that can. Oh, you're saying can't? Yeah. Go to the Isle of Cants. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Clover turns into so lover. <laughs> so lover. <laughs> yeah. He says he goes. Quelf becomes well. Never mind. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> we have o- order lover load cafe. Order lover load. <laughs> yep. And then he had. He told me Gizmos just needs the GIF GIF debate. Applied. Yes. G- is it Gizmos or is it Gizmos, Gizmos or Gizmos? Yeah. Gizmos? I've heard it pronounced Gizmos. Yeah. <laughs> um, Daniel Bundesen says um, bang the dick game. Bang. We all love that. Yep. Burgle bras. Burgle. <laughs> stealing the bras. <laughs> That's great. Uh. Zach, do we know how to say Zach's last name? From Galifianakis. Um, no, no, no. It's like Baduin. Uh, yeah. Baduin. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. something not the way it seems. Uh, we're just gonna say Zach. B. A couple games. Zach That's B what we're gonna say. A couple games. Above and blow. Above and blow. Yeah. Get above and blow me. Yeah. Above Can I blow you from below? Can I bl- blow you from below? No. No. Only above. Above, above and above. blow. Whose pork is that? That's my father's. Your pork. father's. Pork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cathal over on Gamecasters account on the. Uh, Do you remember Facebook that time page. you filled me with my father's pork? <laughs> <laughs> pork. Yeah. Now it's dirty. Did my father's, my father's, pork, father's pork filled fill me that up or what? Yeah. Did you fill me up? Yeah, yeah my father's pork filled um, me. Just went with a classic, of course, of instead of fort, just <laughs> fart. Fart. Mm-hmm. That is just classic. Fart. David Rodriguez, tragedy pooper. <laughs> The Fox Experiment. <laughs> Arse Nova. Fox in the Forest. Nova. Yeah. He Hoes of Might and Magic 3. I don't know what that he game is. Hoes. Heroes of okay. Might and Magic. Oh. Yeah. He Hoes. Yeah. Oh, here. This is the one we loved before. Uh, Twilight Snuggle. Twilight Snuggle. Oh, that, yeah. oh, that was Reed Measle said that a while ago. Um, Water cool. Gape. <laughs> oh my god. Which, oh, shit. Who said that? Uh, David Rodriguez. That's good. On the and then he followed up with. At the Gapes of Loyal. Oh, oh, man. All right. Gape has opened up a whole yeah, new that, avenue. Gape, That's yes. a good one. Nice. Yes, All right. Word. I like that. Uh, and job. then Pole Player was his last one. <laughs> Daniel Bunnison came back. I think Daniel went on, typed a few, and then went looked at his yep. games and came yep. back. Came back. Yeah. Long shit, of course. That's a good one. Uh, lotion Explosion. 
<laughs> what, was no, what happened? What's this mess? Oh, the lotion explosion. Lotion explosion. Oh, yeah. That happened earlier today, right now. And eight. then also has oh, the good. seventh incontinent. And the that seventh will, uh, incontinent? <laughs> which is great. Um, Fucking That'll wrap shit. up our letter okay. swapping. Okay, Swoozle, I gotta give it to I gotta yeah, give it to Swoozle. I think great. Swoozle wins this one. That was... That was funny. Uh, that time you yeah. filled me, that, <laughs> that I lost broke it. Right. So was, I, I feel like, me. oh, we're done with that. And that then I get stuff. more... That are just hilarious. You, you hear, you're so like, funny. how do they do it? People are so funny. Or, or you do that, you do that segment, and then, and then you go, now I've heard them all. Nah, yeah. And well, then, the cool thing is when you haven't done it in a while, a lot of new games come out that you can true. like have some fresh. I'm surprised we didn't get a ton of repeats though. I we know, did my, get some. My father's pork is a new game. My uh, father's yes. Pork. Remember that time you filled me with my father's pork? I remember. <laughs> Gross. You, wait, do you I went to do the police about that. that? Like, there was a time that that happened. Do but you remember? Do you remember, like, you filled me up. You just filled me right on up. Shit, dude. <laughs> to the shit. brim. You're eating my father's pork. Whoa, is this your father's that's pork? My father's I thought that was my pork. father's No, no, that's pork. my father's you're, pork. You're right. Fuck. Your father's pork you're is supposed, better than You were supposed to eat pork. your mom's brisket, but you're eating my father's pork. You're right. Give me that back. Give me it. Give me your dick. Give me your dick. Why don't you step dum, dum, inside? Dum, Come on, it's dum, warm dum, in there. Dum, you think you found dum, some grass, dum, but nope, it's pubic dum, hair. Dum, you wonder why dum, there's dum, so dum, much dum, underwear. Dum, you stepped dum, inside an Natalie's nook. Today, I'm doing a board game beatdown. Finally. Oh. Yes. Okay, remember? Oh, <laughs> I know. What is it? Oh, shit. No, I just want to have a little... Okay. You have okay. preamble? Yeah, I have a little preamble. Um, remember in episode 100 when I didn't just do like one game? Yes, I liked that, that a lot. And I was like, ooh, uh-huh. Ryan, I like that. Oh, you're giving Baby Bird what he wants? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and feed Baby Bird. This board game deep down is a what? bunch of Lacerda games. Oh, shit. Yeah. The Lacerda beat down. Not you're beating down beat Vitel down. Lacerda. Yes. I like this. In so, face. Yeah, I like that too. Well, let's get started. Oh, you First, I'm well. beating down Lisboa. This game okay. was ranked 57. Yeah, that's pretty high. <laughs> Not after this. Some people Not don't like this. these games. Not after Jehu this. Jehu nine three zero three says <laughs> it's unnecessarily complicated and unattractive enough to play again. Why well, is this game unnecessarily complicated? Guy Hero okay. says it makes my eyes bleed. <laughs> no, it doesn't bleed. though. It doesn't though. <laughs> well, I don't I mean, think. I don't think that's I true. I agree with him, but it doesn't make it bleed. Uh, wow. Mir- Miraculous says a cluster cuss of mechanisms. What? Oh, like cluster. Oh, oh the cuss is fucked. Oh, okay, that's yeah. right. you're cool. Come on, fucking guy. Just fucking Jasmine say Irv fuck. says Liz boring. Ah, oh, wow. that's good. <laughs> that's <laughs> good. Nice. And penguin clap traps. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dirty and <laughs> and a little Batman. And, and a little Batman. Yeah. Like Peter's wow, gonna come wow, out. Wow, wow, wow. That was penguin wah, wah. getting in the clap trap. It yeah, sounded like uh, Mister. <laughs> I know, no, it was the penguin from Batman. <laughs> oh, uh, penguin Caught clap up. trap says, "Only game I finished the game, and I still don't understand how to play." Only oh. game I finished the game. Yep. Okay. And I still don't understand only, how to play. Maybe like only yeah. I mean, it's a it's a very complex. Oof, it's a yeah. rough one. Um, next, the gallerist is ranked sixty three. Yeah. Wow, that's high. Two. But Gaia Hero on Mars even commented higher, on this again yeah. and says, game about art that is horribly ugly. You had one job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. It's great. You but... is for Unicorn says, a puzzle overburdened with an opaque core loop and tons oh of inscrutable God, icons. Pretentious. I've never felt so disengaged playing anything. I hope that you never person... have a date in your life. Oh my God, I think they're so smart. <laughs> Norman DeWept says, <laughs> Norman DeWept. This is often lauded as the most accessible of Lacerda's games, but I found it to be another virtually incomprehensible wall of rules. It's often lauded as the most accessible of his games the gallerist no i, I disagree <laughs> i hope no one ever fills him up <laughs> with, with their father's pork. yeah i hope no, <laughs> yeah. i hope that person never gets filled up that's why you don't deserve to get filled yeah you don't deserve you don't to need filled. well you can tell by the way they wrote that that they're not filling they're anyone not be, up currently. Yeah, not, <laughs> right no one is being filled filling. up by them not by yeah. norman you wept <laughs> G. Silva says, fuck this game. <laughs> See, I like that Fair. kind of. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Yeah, you know what? I'm with you. Fair. Fuck it. Tony, I love the game, but yeah. fuck this Tony game. Tony DAQ says, not fun. One of those games that mistakes complicated for deep. Oh, it mistakes it. <laughs> you must be mistaken. You must be mistaken. This isn't deep. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Kanban nice. is ranked 74. Look at this. Look at all these games in the top 100. I know. They're, they're like very all the top high. 100. Uh, Eviola says, cars <laughs> and Elon Musk suck. <laughs> what? Does that ha- what does Elon Musk have? To do? What is, yeah, why is Elon Did Musk something? Kanban is not Tesla. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
Uh, Niz- Nizamko says, okay. hmm, incredibly bad. <laughs> incredibly <laughs> bad. What should I say? Let, Let me, me type that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, they wrote a comment to say that. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're going to look back in two years and be like, oh, did I play? Con-? I don't know. They're old all of a sudden. Did I First play Kanban? Oh, what did I think? H M M M dot 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 incredibly bad. Oh, that's very poignant <laughs> of me. I'm yes, so happy I, was, I wrote I that right. comment. I was right. Archeus the world needs says, to see this. Absolutely hated this one. Boring as hell. So far, we've gotten rid of every Lacerda game we've played. Sold it. Stop playing them. Stop yeah. playing. You know you hate them. them. Stop playing them. Uh, Arceor says... Wait, what? I don't Arceor? know. Arceor? Oh, I'm like, is this Eeyore? Oh, Eeyore. says, same game, <laughs> triple price, buy. metallic cars more expensive than micro machines. That must be like the EV More expensive version. than micro machines? <laughs> yeah. Why you are you use the comparing micro, machine collection? micro machines <laughs> to your board in, game? Do you think you could cars? use the Hot Wheels collection from the D to replace some Just of the cars? Of the, and the cars yeah, are pretty I'm damn not. tiny. They would need yeah. to be micro machines. I think they're even smaller than micro machine size. I, I don't know why you would be. You look at these cars, you'd be like, wait a second. Hold on. Right. Yeah, micro machine. Oh, look, Jeff. Micro machines, can, cheaper. But you're not like buy buying micro them Micro machines are even cheaper right? than this, Jeff. They come Jeff. with yeah. the game. Well, there's the in the in the Kickstarter there where you could buy metal cars. Oh, I and don't. So he's talking about. I, I just don't know toy. why you would compare that to that. <laughs> oh shit! I can't play this game. You know why? Because micro machines cost about a couple pennies sold it, on the dollar less than more. these <laughs> metal ones that I never had to buy in the fucking first place to play the game. Go fill what yourself a stupid up. Stupid ass comment. Go fill yourself up, you douchebag. <laughs> God, go eat your father's pork. Yeah, <laughs> your father's pork. You'll never have your father's pork. <laughs> Is that a bad thing or a good thing? I don't know. And Depends on how you meet. Last game on Mars, ranked forty nine. Yeah, God, they're all in the top one hundred. Uh, M.A. Wilson 04 says, I could describe why some people enjoy this one. I just can't empathize with that appeal on any level. Wait a minute. I want him to describe. Describe it. No, nope, he can't. I, I he can describe. He could, but he's not suing. Oh, I could describe. I could describe why some people enjoy this one. I just can't empathize with the appeal on any level. So cool. Why do people write sentences people like so that? Cool. God. Just like, the question I just says, cool. I didn't get, <laughs> sorry, I didn't got any feeling while I played it besides <laughs> boredom. Like it. Of course, it is challenging arranging things to get the most out of it, but I want a theme, not a game made for a calculator. <sighs> You ha- he had me until uh, then. Do you have your TI-84 yeah, so that you can I was, play this Lacerda game? I was with him until calculator? he said it was designed for a calculator. <laughs> uh, did you bring your calculator? You can't play this I game. don't have my calculator. I have my cell phone. Can <laughs> I use downstairs. that? No, cell phone's not allowed. No fun. Peepser says, Peepser. <laughs> I totally understand why Lacerda's games cost $150. Each unnecessary mechanism costs $1 each. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Although, 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 <laughs> no, I'll give it to him. That's good. <laughs> Mech Warrior 5 says, game is crap. Inside the pretty design box and organizer was a full day boring horror. This is on Mars? Yeah. A full day boring. Yeah. So I can actually understand that. Mm-hmm. If someone is like, oh, this looks great. Let's play it. And it's like four hours later. You're like, oh my God. What? <laughs> and, your, what? and your BGG name is Mech Warrior. Yeah. You're like, probably not. You're not into this. Right. Yeah. yeah. You want uh, Ameritrash stuff. Mike. Michaelius, I don't know. Okay, that sounds says, cool. Want to be computer game? Pointlessly complicated to the point of absurd. Too many points. You said it point too many to times. If you didn't game. say point twice in five words, I might have listened to you. <laughs> yeah. It really wants to be a computer game. Get a th- get a fucking thesaurus. Want to be get a calculator? Game. You fucking nerd. This game was made for calculators. <laughs> Lion. <laughs> this turns into just us roasting these people. Yeah, I know <laughs> these, poor, these poor people. Yeah. I just hope, I don't actually think anything about the people as a. It's like when we're doing this. They're, these aren't real people saying this that I'm talking to. It's yeah. just, it's just, like we're just memeing here. But uh, well, fuck them. Lion them. says, if you like <laughs> long Euro up. games with lots of <coughs> intertwined <coughs> rules and actions with a weak Mars theme, then you'll love this game. The the Mars theme is weak. <laughs> you're know. actually on the planet of <laughs> Mars, <laughs> developing yeah, I I Mars. Understand. Yeah, and you're going back <laughs> and forth. It's not like right, that's dumb. dumb. <laughs> and last, you won't be bored. Games says, cool. looks great, but the juice isn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> I actually really like that <laughs> idiom or whatever that is. The juice oh, isn't God. worth the squeeze. I'll, I hope you never say that about my penis. Oh, my God. <laughs> she squeezes it? Yeah. Squeeze. Oh, like and a, then sometimes the juice comes yeah, out. Yeah, that's how I do oh, it. You just, like, isn't you that, squeeze, isn't that not right? That, like, that's how you get the handy? I say, ow, every time. And she's just like, <laughs> I think he's moaning. So I'm like, you, ow. She's like, you this is a weird moan. Just, he's like, moaning weirdly. ejaculate out of like self-preservation. Like, I don't intend to ejaculate. She gets it out of me as if she's milking a cow. She's milking. 
But even in a milking, even when you milk a cow, you have to do a little bit of up and this is more of just like a like No, I think you grab it and then yeah, she's she's like no, she, okay, you? picture okay. it like, so she's, like she's milking me. Okay, she's milking. Yeah. So there, that's that's why you have the hole in your bed. You lay flat I was gonna on, say, the bed. on the bed. She's you have to be like face down. down. So yanking. Yeah. Filling up. She's just. Yep. And, and, I have and, a bucket And, and oddly, <laughs> a squirt comes out every th- every single ah. yank. Okay. It's, and she has a bucket. Yeah. Hand <laughs> that time there. you filled me. And then by the time yeah. by the time I'm done, it's mostly all evaporated. That's why I wear my overalls. Okay. All right, Natalie, do me a favor. <laughs> get out a tire. Get out a, a yes, stopwatch sir. here, because we are doing. We are moving on to. First of all, good beat down. <laughs> Vitale Lacerda, how the fuck do you feel, man? Yeah. You're fucked. <laughs> oh, you got most all your games in top 100? Pfft. Yeah. What about the ones you that are You should aren't? feel shitty about yourself. We didn't oh roast those. Yeah. yeah. That would have been so embarrassing. <laughs> Remember how you have like a game in like, <laughs> that's number 300? Yeah. <laughs> to go. Oh, loser. Geez, loser. All right. We are doing <laughs> the game that we play when we don't have time to prepare a game. And this one is the three-minute game, which we're going to hey. get through eventually. Um, so how this game works is Natalie has a timer for three minutes. And I'm going to read clues to Jeff to try to get him to guess the game. I can say anything other than the name of the game itself. And we're going to try to get through this. Natalie, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Now, I believe... (laughs) Yeah, let's do it. ...that Natalie is rooting against us. No, no. There's no belief necessary. Can you feel it? I can almost see it. There was a conversation... I can see it coming off of her head. ...this happened that Natalie Ryan left me out of this game? Yeah. ...angry. (laughs) Like because I think, think that, that she it, might even stop the time I'm early. You know what's funny is she didn't say she didn't say me. She was like, "You left someone out this time." You <laughs> left someone as out. if I have ever participated in the game. <laughs> you left someone out. I'm guessing you think because I created the game that I'm that's me being involved. You're running it. Yeah. So I'm running it. Start the timer. Go. <laughs> that's yeah. me running it. No, no, I know what you mean. I know. I understand what you mean. I'm very sorry, but we got to do this. We gotta do this. We gotta get this done, and I, I think know what you're implying. I today. can't wait. I'm impl- <laughs> I'm not. I hope. What if we that. get like ten, Natalie? Wouldn't you just be so happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah you'd be so I fucking. Happy. Oh, so yeah. that's the thing. You, yeah, you believe that she doesn't want us to win. There is. I can see it emanating out of her skull. <laughs> yeah. The. I think she's gonna stop the, the time vibes time. of her trying to prevent us from. She's gonna stop doing early, this. I think. She is. We're gonna get like two minutes and. Oh, it's done. It's done. You lost. Huh? Oh, oh, whoopsies. Three minutes. All right. Are you ready? Tell me. Do it on your mark as I go. Thing. On your mark. Get set. Go. If you tell us here again about making wine. Vinos. Okay, the other wine making game by Stonemeyer. Yeah, um, this is the game on a map. It's it's a uh, it's a game where you're looking at things with a uh, micro macro. Yep. Crunchy. Um, this is the game rolling right in space that I hated. Natalie loved. Twilight Inscription. Yep. This is the party game where you have three rounds. The first round you can say whatever you want. Second round you can say one word. Yep. Uh, this is the game that you just bought. Twelve players play. You just write down a thing. And if you're on this, yep. Um, this is the game that Natalie loves so much. It's a hidden movement game um, where she was on the page. Yep. This is the other hidden movement game that you and me love a ton. Letter from my. Yep. This is the other hidden movement game that's really heavy that had a Furby. <laughs> Fury of Dracula. Yep. This is uh, the tea <laughs> game that I love the most. Um, Taylor Walken. Yep. This is the tea game that I probably love the second most. Uh, uh, that you just uh, bought. Tekenu. You were trying to find it? Yes. Yeah. Um, this is the tea game that you love the most. Uh, Zulkin. <laughs> yep. This is the tea game that you might love the, the third most. To want to see. Yep. This is the tea game that you love the second most. Uh, uh, just. This is the tea game that we just played last. The last tea game. Um, Tabanusi. Yes. And then this is the tea game that hasn't come out yet, but it's coming out soon and I really want it. Uh, to... Yep. Title number. Yes. 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 This is the, the most recent game on the Game Casters Essentials. Um, Guild of Merchants Lord. Yep. This is a game with a bunch of wildlife animals and it's got a big tree. Everdell. Yep. This is the game with birds. A wingspan. Yep. Uh, this is the game that Nally didn't really like because, oh, I don't want to buy your dice. I don't want you to buy my oh, dice. Uh, Twa. Yep. This is the game that's just like Twa. Black set Angel. in space. Yes. Uh, this is the game that is, um, you're you're making a, a grid of, you have a cards and you're running them in order and there's a bunch of minis everywhere and um, you're opening envelopes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, this is a game that you just played where you're stacking tiles on top of each other and you like Propolis. it. Yep. Um, this is a game that we've played that's really fucking hard and it's a rolling right game that breaks splitter. my brain. Yep. Yeah. This is a game that you and me played kind of wrong. It's kind of like Istanbul where you're, you got it. It's a bit heavier. We didn't score it correctly. And oh. it's kind of like a Japanese kind of a name. Uh, Yokohama. Yep. Um, this is the game that's kind of like that Japanese kind of game. That's the later one that Istanbul. now loves. Yep. <laughs> uh, this is a game that we used to play all the time. It's World War II and it's got two numbers. It's got numbers. No, the other one. Uh, Memoir 44? Yep. This is, okay, now this is the World War II game, the other one that we played. Yeah, nice. Yep. Uh, uh, this is Skirmish Boobs. <laughs> War Chest. And now the game that we played, all the four of us together with the whiteboards. You, me, Devin, Detective, and Nail. Yes! Modern yes, that's game. 30! We did it! 
Yay! How many horse time is Natalie. left? 38 <laughs> seconds for the first yes. time ever! Natalie hates her life! She's so <laughs> fucking pissed off! She's clapping oh. out of duress! We killed it that time! Good job, guys. Good, Good job. job. Good job, guys. Let's move on. Oh, what else my. are we doing? <laughs> is there another game that I can play? <laughs> <laughs> It's the longest two minutes and 20 seconds of my life. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got you that like monkey off our in, back. And I'm like, they're going to get this with like tons of time to spare. Jeff was just knocking them the fuck out. I'm like, oh, just all the tea games. Just think of the next tea game. Oh, so now this see? is first, this see? Is baby's first three minutes. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, of course. It's getting okay, off tea Natalie. games. So now the thing is, you want to be included, you make the games. <laughs> you, <laughs> and then I will read it to Ryan, maybe. We'll try that. So if you come up with a list. Yeah, come up with okay. the 30 games, and all then right. we'll do it that way. I'm cool with that. <laughs> the games that no one's so you're ever not, played. So you're not. She wasn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, the games she's never played. No one's ever played before. It's going to be stuff like Twister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lots of games have cards, you guys. It's true. Oh, games like yeah. Maria, Star Wars Destiny, I'm sure there's more. All the games. <laughs> but <laughs> what about all the great games out there that are both much worse than the two I named and also uh, cardless? Doesn't exist. Do such games exist? Natalie thinks not. <laughs> Find out now in our top five games without cards. We're going to go oh, Jeff, God. Natalie, me. So Jeff, whenever you're ready, start us off with your number five game without cards. I'm Jeff. Now... Hi, Jeff. The... I tried to have games that are heavier on the heavier side. So, same Medium here. plus. I did the same thing because there's a ton in the lighter category. Yeah, you can like, put splitters on there. And... Yeah, there's the you know even like Azul stuff like that. So I tried to go heavier like games that you'd almost be like, wow, there's no cards in that yep, game. That's kind of what I went with. My number five is Rahas of the Ganges. Nice zero cards. It's a lot of done on tiles um, and dice are kind of those. Yep, those things, but. Again, you'd be like, there's there's cards. There's got to be right? cards in that. But there's there? not. Rahas the Ganges, zero cards. Very good. Very good. Nelly, what's your number five? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. No, oh, it's not no. like Why that. are you laughing like that? I just that? Like, really struggled with I'm like, every single game has cards. I know. Yeah. She texted me after we decided on this list, and she's like, every game that's ever been made has cards. And I was like, yep. your number one favorite game of all time doesn't have cards. Yep. I also <laughs> excluded I also excluded if, you, if there was a card player aid. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there is a card player aid, I, I, it was acceptable for my list. As well. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, I was like, this isn't going to be my top five games with no cards. It'll just be a five list of games, games that, that exist with no of. cards. Her number one game of all Twister. time, and number five is Twister. <laughs> uh, my number five is Shobu. It's got rocks and sticks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not rocks sticks. and sticks and boards. <laughs> it's just rocks, two, rocks four boards and, and, a, and rope. a rope. There's no sticks. Oh, yeah. It's a bunch of twig and berries. And Who cares? It's just penises and balls. It's just, yeah, it's just twig and berries. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Number five for me is the game that started it all, Carcassonne. It is a straight up tile laying game. There's not even a. There's not even really a board. There's like a scoreboard, but you just make the. You know, the board with the tiles, and there's no fucking cards, and it's great, and that's Carcassonne. I love Carcassonne. Jeff's number four. <laughs> My number four is one of the tea games that was on the list, Zolkin. All of the tea games were on the list. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying his number four. <laughs> My number four was on the list. Is a tea game that was on the list. <laughs> you could also pick another tea game and put that on there, too. I could have said Teotihuacan as well. Teotihuacan doesn't have any cards either. What do you think about that? Are you sure? Yes. I'm pretty sure. You keep saying this. <laughs> Natalie, what's your number four? That's the point of it. <laughs> chess. If you say chess, I swear to you. She, okay, real quick. She sent me the message and said, hey, and she was like, she was like, you know, no fucking games outside of chess don't have cards, you know. <laughs> I said back and I was like, "Good luck making yeah, the list." Fuck, dude, your number one game of all time doesn't have cards. It should fucking respond. <laughs> she didn't. No, wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> like was he? Well, that? I was just oh yeah. There, like, I'm like this one. I was like, oh no, that has cards. This that one. Oh cards. no, that, that has game. Cards. And did you put your number one game on this list? You'll see. Oh god, just say it. <laughs> she was so like, it out of way. she was like, I got it. Ark Nova. No, underwater cities. No, we're all we're terraforming all. Mars. No, it's like nothing but cards. <laughs> The crew. Dominion. No. Yeah, the crew. No. Uno. <laughs> yeah. Thunderstone. 
<laughs> All right, what's your number? Four fucking, what's your fucking number four? The fucking number four is land versus fucking sea. <laughs> <laughs> no cards in fucking sea. There's no cards in the fucking. Those sea. are just tiles. That is a whole awesome. box of you got us. All right, my number four was uh, another T game on the list called Tea to Walk, and I'm gonna Sorry, I'm gonna yeah. vacate that one. That's okay. I'm going to go with another uh, pick that I really like called Pulsar twenty eight forty nine. There's a lot of tiles There's no in the in game. That? There's no cards in it. Yeah, sure? that was so that's good on the list because I think about it, I'm like. There's not cards in there, so I like that. Then yeah, it's it's one that you have to like kind of yeah. yeah. There's I no have cards. To look it up. So the you know the the <laughs> dice Nally does not. She doesn't believe it. Believe she doesn't believe it. I don't. Re- me. No, I just mean I don't remember. Well, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. I'm saying like I could. I'm telling you. Even if I thought of that in my head, I'd be like, I have to go research. <laughs> I'm going to. Here's hang what I did. Now, you so for some of the ones I looked at, I went on and I just clicked on the directions picture, yeah. on BGG. I did that too. Oh, or yeah. yep, a picture of the components. Well, I thought that Istanbul didn't have cards, and then Ryan's like, it does, and I'm like, oh damn. And I had to cross it off. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's, I mean, I'm like, this one doesn't. And I'm like, oh, And then yeah, I replaced it, it with twig and berries. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> twig and berries. It's just got rocks and sticks. <laughs> no, it doesn't, though. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. It doesn't. It's just got rocks and sticks and boards and ropes. <laughs> it just makes I you go outside stick. and you just grab a bunch of shit from outside. <laughs> and you can play it. You can basically play it with shit from outdoors. Okay? Go outside. This game has rock hike. sticks, blades of grass, the leaves. Like, basically pick up stuff. Stick. You got it. It's like the whole game. You can just get a cup, put it in water. You fill a cup of the water upon the table, or you got Shobu. Done. You're done. <laughs> That's all you need. That's yep. it. Tiddly Plastic winks. cup of water. Jeff, cut. what's your number three? My number three is a game that I've been dying to get back to the table recently called Praga Caput Regan. Yeah, good one. Mm-hmm. No, there might the player aid might be a card, but again, I'm leaving that off. Everything yeah. is, is tiles. Yeah, that doesn't count. Um, that doesn't that's matter. not part of the game. Man, that game's good. I miss it. I want to play it. That's yeah. That, that's the Suchi Man. Suchi. 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 New, Suchi Atumi, uh, baby. I got the new Suchi game as well, sitting, waiting. Messina. What's it called? Oh, Messina. 13 yeah. something. Messina. 14 something. Right. Hmm. Let, let us know how that street. goes. Yeah, well. For sure. All right, now let's number three. My number three is Patchwork. Oh, that's a good one. I wasn't totally sure they didn't have cards, but Ryan confirmed. Patchwork is Patchwork. What co- Think of the game. Right? Oh, yeah. You've played it well, many, so many, many times. There's so many cards or games where like I was like, oh, Downtown Farmer's Market. And then I was like, oh, wait, yeah, you flip up the cards to like, you know. Yeah, but Patchwork is literally just oh, polyamino tiles. That's a, you don't flip the cards. What it's is tiles. Natalie talking wait, about? does know. that not have cards? Downtown Farmer's Market is just square cards. tiles. They're it's just a tile. Oh, in my head when you... Okay. I'm just a dumb. You're, no, no, you were you one. were not thinking of downtown farmers market when you yeah, said that to me. No, you were thinking of next I didn't station say London. It to you. you, I said, thought it to oh. myself and then crossed it uh, off. You were, you were, she was already yeah. drunk. Most next station London has cards. Next station London has cards. Has cards. Yep. I know that one has cards. Downtown farmers market is just fucking square. T- okay, okay. Number get three. rid of Shobu and I have downtown farmers. We're market. not getting rid of okay. Shobu. No, we're not getting Shobu. rid of sticks and berries. Sticks and berries. Yeah, we're not getting rid of the cup of water game. Number three for me. Is an Uwe Rosenberg game that I love so much called Caverna that I haven't played in forever. I that doesn't have cards. Oh my god! Are you serious? <laughs> I know. There's so much stuff See, in there. Natalie is the exact response that I wanted from the list. Of so oh you, now you goodness. know you're nailing this is your how list. All of our listeners should be. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, no. I think she is right about this one. Oh. I, 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 oh, that's a good. That's a good call. I think Caverna does have cards for to tell you what round it is. Like, here's the round. So, <laughs> look at her face. Is she like, look at her she fucking face. Nailed she it. was like, I, n- I fucking I told it. you. I knew I knew it. Right. I wasn't I knew sure it. sure that Patchwork I didn't have cards. Knew it. Replace it. <laughs> All right. Number three for me is <laughs> is a game by the good Dr. Reiner Knizia called Tigris and Euphrates. <laughs> And that one, you're oh, just drawing yeah, tiles, okay. playing tiles, and then making yep. pyramids and you stuff. Sure about that? Uh, God damn it! You Natalie's not sure that Patchwork had yeah, cards. Or Downtown Farmer's Market. You should have seen that. When she was that like, Caverna had she was round like, cards. Caverna has cards? And then I was like, actually, no, I think it does. And she looked at me and she was like, oh. Huh. What do you think about yep. that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you feel gotcha. that? Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> I knew it. Burned. Natalie, what the fuck? Jeff, what's your number two? Keyflower has no cards. Oh, yeah, don't. Yeah, Keyflower is a game. This Keith. whole list are games I want to play right now. I know. The cardless games are play. so good. I've been dying to get back into the, like this medium medium heavy playing games because mm. I just haven't played. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those games are just so good. Keyflower is amazing. For sure. So good. All right, Natalie, what's your number two? My number two is Three Sisters. That's a good game. Hey, Three you did Sisters. It. Hey, hey, Three Fisters. <laughs> yeah, three sisters. <laughs> Won't you stick your fist right inside of me? <laughs> oh, wow. All right, number two for me is a game I haven't played in a long ass time, and I love it a ton, and it's called Hansa Teutonica. Mm. And that one's just oh, fucking man. cubes 
and yeah. discs. Fucking cubes. And little tiles. Yeah, yeah, just cubes fucking cubes. They're fucking me. Oh, no, they're, they're ripping me. It's terrible. All right, Jeff, what's your number one? My number one is one of my favorite games of all time. We'll probably jump back into a top ten the moment I play it, Homesteaders. Wow, Ooh. you haven't played that in forever. Forever. I That's played a long it's, time. It's always been a top ten game for me. I've played a lot of games recently that have kind of pushed it down. Yeah. But I think maybe once I play it again. Because everything you're bidding on are the tiles. Yeah. And there's cool, like, cow meeple in there. There is. Home, mm. steaders. Lots of tiles world, in that game. Know. Good game. Natalie, what's your number one? My number one is, surprise, Castles of Burgundy. Yeah, Yay. girl. Wait, there's no cards in Castles there's of no, Burgundy? If I, was like, if I was like, oh, yeah, there's a round card, she'd be like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew you I lied told to you. <laughs> I fucking told you. You number... meant the card game, though. You made Castles of Burgundy the card game. Right? Yeah, the card no, game. There's cards no, in no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> number one for me is uh, one of my favorite games of all time that I would love to play all the time, and it's Terra Mystica. No, there's no cards in Terra Mystica. It is Terra. Mi- oh. Name a card in Terra Mystica. Go ahead. Go ahead and name it. Uh-huh. Okay. I, got, I hope you think of oh, one. Oh, shit, there are cards. No, there's not. <laughs> Look at her face. Oh, oh, Look at her face, though. Look at her oh, face. Oh, oh. Look at her goddamn got face. You. Gotcha. Gotcha, yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> <Great. laughs> got you. Got you. Got you. stupid idiot. Bitch. Ryan's you gonna, dumb. Ryan's going to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's going to wake up tomorrow morning, and I'll have pulled all these games off the shelf yeah, and have Look at all the cards in here. She's on the floor just like rifling through. Look what I found, you motherfucker. She can't. I can't sleep. You stupid. We better Fuck. edit the Turn podcast. Turn on the recording. We gotta record this. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> How about now? Hello. That's way better. Okay. Okay, the end of the last episode was really funny. <coughs> Natalie getting the hiccups. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Hilarious. When I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot I was like, about well, this I was part. <laughs> <laughing>. <laughs> 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 like that's just what happens to me. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? What's funny is we recorded a lot before, or she did that a lot before I hit record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hiccuping. Right. Well, yeah, you, you could hear me down the stairs. Like, you better be recording. I'll yeah, down yeah. The that's and then you turned it on, and we were like, oh, I think they're gone. And then they came and back. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs>